following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Scott Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia, where the number five team in the nation, the Louisville Cardinals, continue their quest for a spot in the college football playoff as they take on the Virginia Cavaliers on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon. And hello from Charlottesville, I'm Alan Bestwick. He's college football Hall of Famer, Coach Mike Bellotti. And Coach, not only today do we get to see the number five team in the nation, we get to see one of, if not the most exciting player in the country, Louisville quarterback Lamar Jackson. What makes him so good? It's his speed. You know, some people have speed on a track and spikes and no pads. He's got game speed on the field. There's no difference. Pads don't slow him down. He's so explosive. He got acceleration that leaves everybody else in the dust. And then a spin move at the end. He's got no regard for his body. We talk about dynamic. Look, he goes over the top. He can go around and through. It doesn't matter. Then some of you old people remember Benjamin slices and dices. He slices defenses up with his arm. He dices them up with his legs. Very nice. Slices and dices. I like Look like at some of these numbers Lamar Jackson has posted already this season. He's responsible for 34 touchdowns. That's a Louisville record with still five or so games to be played this year. First player in ACC history with both 15 rushing and 15 passing touchdowns in a single season. And a lot of football still to be played. And Jackson's been responsible for about 29 points per game. That's more than 60 FBS teams entering weekend play, including some pretty brand name programs. If you look up dual threat in the dictionary, his picture is next to it. Lamar Jackson and Louisville taking on Virginia. We'll talk Cavaliers and have the kickoff when we come back in a minute. Number five, Louisville and Lamar Jackson at Virginia. And we're ready to kick. Virginia has won the toss. They will get the ball to start the game. And I wonder how many times they really take the ball as opposed to now just wanting to keep the ball out of Lamar Jackson's hands. Anthony George kicks for the cards. Short kickoff taken by Joe Reed, the freshman, who's had some exciting returns. He'll plow forward to about the 28-yard line, make it almost the 29, and that's where the Cavaliers will start the first offensive possession of the game. Their quarterback is Kurt Benkert, the graduate transfer from East Carolina. He has thrown for a, just a little under 58% completion so far this year. They spread it out. They throw the ball around. And Benkert pulled from the last game in late in the game to step back and regroup they after thought struggling. Was, they thought it was rushing things. They wanted to watch it from the sideline for an entire quarter. They're hoping that's going to pay dividends today with better play. He thought it was a very beneficial experience for him. Let's see how it turns out. Take one, Mizell will get the first touch. The star running back for the Cavs. He catches the ball a lot out of the backfield as well. And let's see if they adopt the Duke philosophy of taking a lot of time off the clock, milking the clock. We'll see. Bronco Mendenhall has done a great job, I think, everywhere he's been. This is his toughest rebuilding job, though he said this, the, the hill may be a little steeper than he thought. Mendenhall in his first year here in Charlottesville after 11 terrific years at BYU. The Duke strategy you're talking about, when the Blue Devils took the cards right down to the wire, they took the play clock all the way down on almost every offensive snap. throws complete it's Keon Johnson out across the 40-yard line and a first down for Virginia and obviously that strategy is to play keep away control the clock shorten the game keep the ball out of Louisville's possession they're the number one scoring team in the nation don't give them as many opportunities and Virginia is seeking some consistency today they've talked about the fact they've scored 28 points in one half but sometimes they go an entire quarter struggle to get a first down so it's about first downs leading to more manageable third downs now first down here Albert Reed the running back Benford the throw just a little bit behind Alameda Zacchaeus and incomplete sets up second down that play right there is a form of their running game they don't run the ball uh, designated runs to the backfield. A lot of times they're throwing the ball to the backs and the flats, hoping to get them one-on-one on, one on the outside, take a little pressure off that offensive line. So second down and 10, and back to what you were talking about a second ago, the first down, something that both offensive coordinator Robert and I and Kurt Benkert and Bronco Mendenhall all discussed with us, that 
their inability to sustain drives doesn't stem from their poor third down conversion rate. It stems on not getting any positive yardage on first down. That's the situation they're in here. Pressure coming. He gets it away, Benford does, with a receiver just out in front of Ryan Santoro and incomplete. Santoro had a chance right there. He got a little short arm disease at the end of that play, but watch just the pressure inside. This is one of the things that they're trying to get rid of the ball quickly, but nice job by Bankert stepping up in that pocket, even though he knew he was going to be hit. Welcome, welcome to my world. By 335 pounds, the Asian Richardson. But that's one of the reasons why they pulled him from the game last week against North Carolina, because he was rushing throws like that, getting happy feet. And he wasn't trusting his protection, trusting the guys up front. Although when you get hit like that, it's harder to trust him. So here's one of those third and long conversions for the Cavs. They'll hand it off. Smoke Mizell gets smoked inside. Not much going, and it brings up fourth down. James Hearns with the hit for Louisville. So the punt team will come on after taking nearly two minutes off the clock for Virginia but uh, not getting anything to show for it. Nicholas Conti leads the ACC in punt average, but he will kick to a very dangerous Jair Alexander, number 10 for Louisville. Fair catch signaled for, but a very half-hearted fair catch signal. I don't see a flag coming out, or will there be? All right, no flag, so Lamar Jackson and the Louisville Cardinal offense comes onto the field. There he is, the sophomore from Pompano Beach, Florida. 6'3", 205 pounds, and whether it's with his feet or with his arm, he has put the numbers on the board in every game this season. I've been involved with football, college football, for 47 years. I've never seen a more explosive, dynamic quarterback carrying the ball. He can take it all away in one play. Keep the top on the defense, keep it contained in the pocket. Very nice first down game by Reggie Bonifon, and the first flag of the day is out in the offensive backfield. Personal foul, chop block, offense, number 56, number 17. Half the distance to the goal penalty, first down. Jerry Magalanis heading the ACC officiating crew today. You can see this probably take place. Trying to see where that happened. Oh, there it is, there right here. Is. Right here on your screen. You see a high-low combination block right there out in space. And it doesn't matter where it occurs. You cannot block combination high and low at the same time. So back it up now to the three-yard line. This is when your challenge is a defense when Lamar Jackson's in the empty set. Do you rush him? You just try to contain him. He's going to throw over the top and got a receiver wide open. Just out of the reach of James Quick, who would have had six just like that. And that could have been a quick six. Yes. See. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, this is spreading the defense out and then getting one-on-one -on -one matchups down the field. And this is what Lamar Jackson does best. He has a laser arm, and he tends to throw... Uh, the deep pass with not a lot of touch and that's probably what happened right here just a little bit too much on the ball the Louisville offense converts at 46 percent on third down they face third and uh, I'm sorry second down forgot about the penalty Brandon Ratcliffe will now set up third down from about the uh, seven yard line it's a good job by the Virginia defense to force the third along. Now the question, I don't know if you ever consider really pressuring Lamar Jackson, but you want to keep him in the pocket. You want to have spies that are equal to his athletic ability, the guy that's going to be responsible for the quarterback should he break contain. There he goes. Oh, he'll pull up and throw. Got a receiver again. Just tipped away. James Quick and Quinn Blanding there for UVA. I think Blanding might have gotten a fingertip on that ball. I do think he got a piece of that ball. Quinn Blanding, one of the best tacklers in this league, not just on this team, got there. Boy, I'll tell you what, this could have been danger, danger alert. No, he didn't get a yeah, finger on it, but yeah. just enough of a distraction, I right? Think he just distracted him. You're right. Yeah. 
So Mason King on to punt from pretty deep in his own end zone for the Cards. Daniel Ham, 22 for UVA, stands at his own 49-yard line. Short kick. And he's got some room. Can he get the boundary? All the way down to the seven-yard line. And UVA has the first momentum swing of the ball game. Bronco Mendenhall talked about how the special teams had to be the third arm, the third leg. The key to victory in a sense, and certainly this type of punt return is going to help set them up in great field position. Nice job of setting up some blocks right here, especially at the end, and almost finishing this play, but to set the offense up inside the 10-yard line. Now, Virginia is one of the best teams in the nation in terms of scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Yes, they are. They're a 91% scoring rate in the red zone. Third in the ACC, top 20 in the country. They start at the seven-yard line. And could close. Zacchaeus read well. Knocked down by Josh Harvey Clemens, one of the stars of the defensive backfield for the fifth-ranked cards. There are the red zone numbers for the Hoos. Second in the FBS, and every coach will tell you, if you can score touchdowns instead of field goals in the red zone, you've got a great chance to win every game. The problem for Virginia has been getting to the red zone. There's Reed, the bigger, sturdier of the two backs for inside running, but he does not get much there. So it's going to be third and goal from the nine. Stacy Thomas with the tackle for the cards. Todd Grantham, uh, the defensive coordinator for Louisville, they haven't got to be number five team in the nation just by offense. They have a great defense, and certainly they're going to be tested here early. And Kurt dumps it off. And it falls incomplete in the direction of Mizell, and it's fourth down. He panicked a little bit right there, tried to run over the top of his protection, and that's what the coaches had talked about last week. He was playing too fast. You want to be quick, but don't hurry, as John Wooden would say, and he has to be a little bit more relaxed and poised in the pocket. So here's Sam Hayward, former soccer player for the University of Virginia, walked onto the team in September, got put onto the roster in uh, October 1st, and he's here to try and make his second successful field goal, and he does. Well, goes both ways. Virginia gets the first points, but it was three and not seven against the fifth-ranked Cardinals. What a game tonight in the ACC on Saturday Night Football. Number three, Clemson, and number 12, Florida State in Tallahassee. On ABC at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, also streaming on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Hard one to pick. Florida State has had a terrific record of success against Clemson in Tallahassee. But Clemson's not the number three team in the nation for nothing. Florida State has clawed back in a tough start, but I think Clemson right now still has their number. Uh, Clemson is getting better each week. They've had a couple of scares. They've played down sometimes the level of competition. Don't expect that today. Both of these teams want to win, and I'm curious to see who Louisville will be rooting for. We've talked about that a little bit yeah, later. Yeah, it's a big a game with big implications for the Cards also. Of course, they need to take care of business here in Charlottesville first. The first time all season that they haven't scored first in a football game. As Virginia leads 3-0. Here's Malik Williams from the goal line. They get chased out of bounds at around the 25-yard line. As always, Chris Budden is down at field level for us today. Alan, all the hype in Charlottesville was about the number five team and the possible Heisman Trophy winner coming to town. But Bronco Mendenhall did not even mention those words to his team this week. He said, frankly, at two and five, we have so much more to worry about with ourselves. We need to get better in all facets of the game. He did tell me, if you let Lamar Jackson run right through you, if you let his receivers get behind you, they're going to put up 60 points today. Well, they did get behind the Virginia defense a couple times, just couldn't make the connection on the last drive. There's a good, solid connection across the midfield. Jamari Staples rocked as he caught it. Did they rule it a reception or not? Yes, a catch. Some of the Virginia players were waving their arms like incomplete. 
And that's what Lamar Jackson does so well. Those 20-yard throws down the field are lasers. They just finish for him very well. Receivers just have to put their hands out, make sure they catch the ball. And think we might get our first replay of the day. The ruling on the field was a completed pass. The play is under review. Jack Kramer is the ACC replay official here today and also, of course, the Game Day Operations Center collaborative replay. Ooh. What do you think? You know, it's hard to tell. The ball does move, but I think that he controls it through contact with the ground. Does it hit the ground, and does that help him? No, let's see, it, it doesn't touch the ground, so I think that's a catch. I think, I think so. it has harms, his hands and arms underneath the ball. It definitely comes loose on the hit. That's a heck of a hit and a legal hit in terms of striking with the shoulder and that strike zone from the knees to the shoulder pads. Great job of cradling the ball in against his body, and I don't see it touching the ground. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Catch, first down. Yeah, confirmed, so the replay official agreeing with the call on the field that there was video evidence, an indisputable video evidence to back up the call. So across midfield in the one play, Lamar Jackson and the Cards offense are set up at the Virginia 48-yard line. It'll be Travion Samuel with the ball. Wrestled down after about four, maybe five yards by Kelvin Rainey for UVA. One of the things the Virginia defense talked about and Coach Bronco Menahal was they did not want Lamar Jackson to carry the ball. So in read situations, they're going to take care of the quarterback and make somebody else beat them with the ball in his hands. Virginia showing, showing potential pressure here and bringing it. They don't get there, and the wide open receiver, James Quick, couldn't hang on to the ball. Been a tough day already in terms of drops. Lamar Jackson just floats away from any type of pressure, as we can watch. And this is not a perfectly thrown pass, but it's certainly one that should be caught. Tough catch, but just a little bit off on the timing of it in terms of the hand and eyes. So third down for the cards. Jackson just a little too far out in front of freshman Seth Dawkins, and it'll be fourth down. Plenty of time. Protection was fine, but uh, right now Virginia is challenging Lamar Jackson to do what he does not do best. He's not the most accurate quarterback when going from one to two to three reads, and therefore he's going to make some reads in the pocket for keeping him contained. So far, advantage Virginia. So Mason King, the punter, is on. Having said that, I don't think that Lamar is getting a lot of support from his receivers at this point. Several passes that could have been caught. Three drops already in the game. Fair catch signaled for and made by Daniel Ham, And Virginia will get the ball back without giving up any points to Louisville. College football presented by K Jewelers. For 100 years, every kiss begins with K. And in part by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. And Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. The downtown mall in Charlottesville, some eight blocks long. Beautiful spot. We were down there last night. It's a great place to stroll around, find some good food. And they've got an ice rink there, too, which scored points with me. Uh, speaking of icy, Vikings and Bears, Monday Night Football in Chicago. Uh, an NFC North battle, Sam Bradford leading the Vikings. And, of course, Jay Cutler back under center for the Bears this week. It's 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Coverage starting with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 6 and streaming live on Watch ESPN. Kurt Benkert throws on first down, has it complete to Andre Lavroni. He'll be out to about the 17, 18 yard line. And forward progress going to mark him up by the 20, and that'll be a first down for Virginia. Great throw that time by Benkert. He anticipated where the receiver would be through it before he was even out of his break. Perfectly thrown pass, and the receiver caught it. That's what they're asking him to do in this offense is distribute the ball to all the playmakers. <laughs> Oh, 
Smoke Marzell looking for the edge. Very nicely contained and played on the corner by Tremaine Washington for Louisville. They are talking about Kurt Benkert earlier mentioned he was pulled from the game last week against North Carolina. He had been kind of on a roll and then got hit a lot in their game against Pitt. And from that point, things kind of backed off a little bit. Yeah, you want to be able to step back in the pocket, see your reads, and then step into the throw. When you don't get that, when that gets disrupted, it's very difficult, and you tend to lose confidence and faith in the offensive line group. Going to throw downfield. Lavroni, a little too strong for him. He had a half a step on the receiver, and a penalty marker is down. Personal foul, hands to face, defense, number 99. 15-yard penalty, first down. That's James Hearns ticketed for the foul, and so the Cavs get the first down on the penalty yardage. James Hearns, probably their best pass, rush, pass rusher right now with Devontae Fields out. We take a look. Watch way out here. See him come from the outside. He's the best pass rusher they have now that Devontae Fields is not there. And see him just he got a hold of the helmet at the end. It was definitely pushing that. That was fairly easy to spot for an official standpoint. So ball out to the 35-yard line. But the throw is complete. With yardage and more. Donnie Dowling has the grab and has the Cavaliers out across the 45. One of the keys for Virginia on offense is to get the ball out quickly to their playmakers in space. So not going to hold the ball a lot, throw some shots, but get the ball underneath and let them make uh, yards after the catch. There's Robert and I, the offensive coordinator for Virginia, came over along with much of the staff of Bronco Mendenhall from BYU to here. They are doing a combination, too, because they're snapping it under 10 seconds on the play clock, play clock, so they're taking a lot of time. Caught near side, Joe Reed, the freshman, will be across midfield and out of bounds. They like Joe Reed. They think he's the most improved player on this football team. And he's a freshman, but he's 6'3", 210. He's got range, and he's getting better every down, every game. I think if he gets a, a full spring ball underneath him that he didn't have this incoming season, he's going to be really fun to watch the next couple years for uh, Cavalier fans. All right, a little something going here for Virginia. Out across midfield, they'll spot the ball just shy of the 48-yard line of Louisville. Ben Kirk's going to pull it and run it. Get knocked down shy of the line to gain, and it'll set up third down. Here's the Asian Richardson again there on the stop. Second time that big 335-pound redshirt junior has gotten his hands on the quarterback. Kurt Banker, not the niftiest or the fastest runner, but they need him today to keep this defense on. If they can spread the defense out, the quarterback runs, some design quarterback runs, have to be part of their offense. Here's the situation that Virginia was hoping to be in, third and short instead of third and long. And timeout being called for by Louisville. Timeout, Louisville, their first timeout of the half. Todd Grantham saw something he didn't like. And they have stopped it to talk about it. Third down for Virginia in a minute. This is ESPN College Football on ABC. Presented by K Jewelers. For about all that time that you've been away, Coach Bobby Petrino has been on a fairly steady rant against the officials about a variety of topics that um, we could only try to lip read and interpret but let's just say he doesn't think calls are going both ways at this point in the game i think it might have something to do with he thinks they missed some holding penalties third down here for virginia ben kurt try to escape he'll throw knocked away on the far side nice play by that was alexander who got in there to defend he was initially channeling his inner Lamar Jackson, and then he <laughs> lost a little bit of confidence in his speed to get it on the run through the ball. I thought he might have still been able to get that on the ground. He needed about three yards, and as he started to get outside, he saw somebody in a white shirt someplace he didn't think could get done. So here's Nicholas Conti to punt for UVA. Fair catch signal. And made at the 13-yard line by 
Jair Alexander. So for Louisville, as their offense comes back onto the field, drops have been a problem in the early going. Yeah, James Quick today, and, and not all the passes were perfect or anything like that, but he's unfortunately dropped a couple that would have made a big difference in this game. That one, I think he gets distracted, and this is just, you know, getting your hands and eyes in the same place, and he'll get better. He's their best receiver and certainly one of the guys that they would consider to be a playmaker. So there is Quick split out far to the uh, right side of the offensive formation as Lamar Jackson tries to get this Cardinal offense going. Quick toss, coming near side, Brandon Ratcliffe. A lot of blue jerseys there. Yeah, and I think the longer it's like this, the better it is for Virginia. Chris? Alan, hardly any talking going on in the sidelines between the Louisville offensive players. They were standing and just staring at the ground. It wasn't until Keola Mahoney had to go around to everyone and just say, get over it. Remember, just one big play. Quick, obviously, the most frustrated slamming a towel on the ground. You could nickname the, him the eraser. His speed and elusiveness in the open field are legendary. First rush of the day for Jackson, 37 yards. The throw, got a receiver, it's tight end Cole Hicatini, down to the 20 yard line. Before he's wrapped up and dropped by Micah Kaiser for the Cavs, but Hicatini a big, big target at 6'5", 248. JC transfer from City College of San Francisco, they do a great job in that program, but they like him. They just feel he's got a knack for the game and understanding, and certainly he and Lamar Jackson have something going. So back to back explosive plays, the 37 yard run, that a 28 yard pass and run. And an inside run here for Ratcliffe. And he'll get a good four yards on that first down rush. You knew they weren't going to keep him contained for too long because Lamar Jackson just gets too many yards in too many ways in too many games. Yeah. He is uh, way ahead of Phillip Rivers' record. And Phillip didn't run the ball very much. <laughs> Lamar can do it with his, hand, with his legs and his arm. Down into the red zone is Louisville for the first time in the ball game. Jackson throws complete and into the end zone for a touchdown. Jamari Staples hung on through some tough defense and Louisville's on the board. It was a nice job on defense, but Staples just gathered in that ball perfectly thrown and it was, uh, it was a collision right as the ball caught him in the hands. Let's see if he gets in. Tell you looks, what. looks as if I think he's in. What do you think? Yeah, I think so, too. Juan Thornhill did all he could. Look at him trying to rip the ball out, but no knees down. The knees were on top of Thornhill. Well, certainly broke the plane. So six on the board for Jackson and Louisville, and now a point after try from Blanton Creaky, a sophomore kicker, left footer, wearing a different number this week. But uh, adds the point after try, and it is 7-3 for Louisville. After being stymied for the first 10 minutes of this ball game by the Virginia defense, they march down the field. Five plays is all they needed to cover the 87 yards and a touchdown for Jackson and Louisville. What a beautiful day in Charlottesville. Could not be any nicer. For the last weekend of October, a little football in the ACC. Louisville finally gets the offense in high gear and has a 7-3 lead on Virginia. That uh, five-play drive included two explosives, the 20 yards or more plays that coaches uh, focus on so much when evaluating how they did both ways. So creaky to kick with Joe Reed and Daniel Hamm back deep for Virginia. This will be Reed. They'll take it at the four. 
all the way out across the 30-yard line. That's where the Cavalier offense will come onto the field. A look at AT&T inside access now. Bronco Mendenhall taking over this Virginia program this year, wanting to change the culture. So he changed the inside of the football facility. It is full of influential and inspirational figures and sayings, including a couple that are very important to this program. Earned, not given, and less drama, more work. I like the less drama, more work. As a head coach, you deal mostly with the drama. Your assistant coaches deal with the work. So Kurt Benkert throws over the head of Smoke Bizell. Didn't look like he was looking for the ball. We're looking for Chris. Alan, in terms of the earned not giving, you'll notice with the Virginia players, there's no names on the back of their jerseys. In fact, when they started spring ball, fall ball, there were no numbers. You had to earn your number. It was almost like a draft, and the player who worked the hardest got to pick his number first. Bronco Mendenhall told us it was the best moment of his career, just seeing the teamwork and how guys would give up numbers that they wanted if they knew someone else wanted that number. Big, big night late in uh, August, just before the start of the season, when the players voted on the selection order of numbers. And, uh, Mendenhall is very proud of that. Smoke Mizell with a nice gain to set up third down and about three. The Louisville defense knows they've got to contain Mizell. He is the guy that they say wherever he is on the field, we got to know it. We got to adjust our defense accordingly. Yeah, they called out number four specifically. Taquan Mizell, his uh, name. He's a senior from Virginia Beach. His 40th straight game with a reception. Uh, has 40 straight games with a reception coming into this one. He's been one of the lead players on this Cavalier football program. So third down here. Make it third and four. Tipped into the air and almost intercepted. Ball's thrown just a little bit late. See the move right there, the separation, and the ball's thrown behind him, too. And right now, Bankert is a little bit off. These past couple passes was too soon, too late. He's got to get the timing, and that's what they benched him last week, hoping he'd get a sense of how the play should work from the sideline. Well, a chance to keep the drive going, and uh, they don't get it done. So now Conti with a booming punt. But a bounce inside the 10, and they'll down it at the 11. That's where Louisville will take over. There have been some uh, other headlines surrounding this Virginia program of late. With more on that, we check back with Chris. Yeah, and two weeks ago, former UVA football player Adrian Howard filed a lawsuit alleging that the university, quote, fostered a culture of bullying, abuse, harassment, and discrimination. He alleges that UVA wide receivers Donnie Dowling and David Eldridge forced him to fight another teammate as part of an initiation. He says it left him with a concussion and a serious eye injury. He's since transferred. Bronco, when we talked to him, he says he hasn't really brought it up with this team, that they knew about the lawsuit when it happened, and then it's really become more of an annoyance because they thought it was something that they had put in the past. All right, Chris, thanks. As the uh, first down play goes incomplete, Mike, you've been a coach in this business for a long, long time. Have you had to encounter situations like this in your career? I have, and you have to deal with it. Hazing is a very serious issue and one that is not allowed anywhere. And at, at times, you've got to eradicate it, find it. You don't even know about it sometimes as a coach, but if you're aware there's something either traditionally was being done or now your kids want to do, you just got to say, no, guys, football's more important than that. It's a lot at stake. Uh, for, for where the coach is concerned for uh, making sure these kinds of things are eradicated. And Jackson under pressure, he gets away. Stiff arm and all the way out across the 25-yard line and a Louisville first down. And this is him at his best. If we talk about the explosiveness, it just takes one play. They have him in the backfield almost tackled right here. This is a design quarterback draw. You see the lead blocker up front, but he just makes a miss, and he gets used a straight arm. He's very strong. He's only 205 pounds on a 6'3 frame, but he has amazing body strength and durability. When you get a hand on him, you better get both hands wrapped around him and bring him down. They had a chance there, but he cost him some yardage. Now he'll throw, dump off over the middle, falls incomplete. It was Andrew Brown who almost had him wrapped up in the backfield. Then he gets out in some space, and watch this. Yeah, he's just, like I said, he's got length in those arms, and he's got strength in those arms. You are not getting into me to wrap those arms around me. It's like a boxer with a better reach. Yeah, there you go. Hand off, ball is out. 
Virginia's got it. Jackson just about got hit as he handed that ball off and uh, caused a lot of chaos. This is a read play, and like I said, it's it's a question of who's got the ball. Am I going to pull it, or are you going to take it? And I think there was some miscommunication there on that mesh point. See it right there. I'm not sure the back really thought he had the ball. He's running around there, and I think he, he thought that the quarterback was going to keep it. This is the type of play that Virginia needs to be able to stay in this game. So Jeremy Smith, the running back, and Jackson miscommunicate. Micah Kaiser gets the fumble recovery for the Cavs, and the second time in the game, they have plus field position. Mizell with the ball inside the 10. That was an excellent throw. We've talked about the timing and the understanding of when a throw should occur. Tremendous throw, a great catch under duress by Mizell. Hey, you could tell he knew he was going to get popped when he caught it, yep. but he still caught it and secured it. So inside the 10, so it's first and goal. Ben Kirk going to throw the fade. Touchdown, Cavaliers, Donnie Dowling. What timing that Ben Kirk lacked on the last series, he has on this series. He throws that ball once again before the receiver's open to a point. The receiver does a stutter and go type thing on the outside. See this, he's throwing the ball right now. The receiver fights through, fights off of the coverage pressure, makes the catch. Donnie Dowling, nice job. What a nice catch. So Sam Hayward on for the point after try. And the Cavaliers have a three-point lead. Donnie Dowling had no catches last game for the first time all year. Now he's got one in the end zone today for the Cavs. Some would say that to win a game, you have to get turnovers, but others say that you have to score off of those turnovers, so Virginia's got both. So just two plays to cover the 28 yards after the ball on the ground by Louisville and Virginia singing their song at a 10-3 lead here late in this first quarter. Makes me a little bit dizzy looking from the back to see the fans <laughs> go back and forth. Or is this an earthquake? I can't no, tell. No, I'm no, from no. California. So. Yeah, that was on the other coast last week. I'll tell you what, one of the things you want to do when you're a big underdog, and let's face it, the Cavaliers were a massive underdog starting this game. You want to plant seeds of doubt. And Virginia may, may have planted some seeds of doubt. No question. And, and they've taken advantage of opportunities and momentum. They've got to keep the momentum, keep the pressure on the defense, and really contain Lamar Jackson. We've seen how explosive he can be. That's why their whole plan is to make him not carry the ball. Let the running backs carry the football. Make him just watch the game. Taken at the goal line by Malik Williams. Got ahead of steam. He'll be dropped at the 25, maybe 26-yard line, and that's where Jackson and the Cards offense will take over with a minute 16 left. Kick off your Week 8 NFL Sunday with us on ESPN at 10 a.m. Eastern with NFL Insiders Sunday Edition. Early breaking stories and injury news there. Then at 11, Sunday NFL Countdown taking you right up to kickoff. Both shows streaming live, of course, on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. There's the new Countdown crew. And some um, rather spectacular credentials possessed by all. Couple pretty successful quarterbacks, I'll tell you what. So a minute 16 and two timeouts for Lamar Jackson and Louisville to try and get back ahead or even in this game at the end of this first quarter. Coming this way, it's Ratcliffe. He'll be out across the 30-yard line. Dante Wilkins catches up to him and drops him there. Here's what the Cardinal offense has done so far in this ballgame. Not much by their standards. Really, yes. if you're the leading scoring team in the nation, you don't expect to have that many giveaways at this point in the game. So but fun. they are very explosive, so yes. hang on. <laughs> don't assume anything yet. Jackson under pressure, but spins away. Where's the contain? Nice open field tackle made on the outside by Landon Word. 98, one of the true freshmen playing in this second half of the season for Virginia. Bronco Mendenhall talked about having three people be responsible for Lamar Jackson if he broke contain. One on each side and one up the middle. That's what you have to do 
with an athlete of his stature. I'll hand it off. On the delay. And a short gain for Brandon Ratcliffe. Up to the 40-yard line, and that, after they flip the field, will be where Louisville begins the second quarter with the ball. Cavaliers lead by three at the end of the first quarter in Charlottesville. And we're back after this message and a word from your ABC station. Louisville has been a very fast starting team in their games through this point of the season. Today, they are three in the hole to Virginia as we get ready to start the second quarter here in Charlottesville. Alan Bestwick, Coach Mike Bellotti, Chris Budden, and our ESPN College football crew with you. 10-3 Virginia, Lamar Jackson, and the Cards offense with a second down from their own 40-yard line. Throw near side is complete to Jamari Staples. He'll wrestle forward for the first down before Kareem Gibson knocks him down for Virginia. He's a big target, 6'4", 195, and I'll tell you what, the protection right now afforded Lamar Jackson has been really good, and I think that's partly because Virginia's afraid to rush too hard to give him a gap to attack downfield. And yeah, they're not rushing a ton of people. No, and, they, and they're keeping more of a contained rush, trying to squeeze the pocket. Jackson hands off. Radcliffe will have a little bit on first down. So looking back on that first quarter, Correct me if I'm wrong, but my opinion is it wasn't so much what Virginia did, it's what Louisville didn't do. The three drop passes, the fumble that really, you know, was all on Louisville. I agree with you. The fact that Virginia took advantage of the takeaway by converting it to a touchdown is a difference in this game. Yep. Lamar Jackson, four carries, 61 yards in the first quarter. He's three of nine passing. And a timeout, Virginia saw something they didn't like. Timeout, Virginia. So Bronco Mendenhall steps on the field and signals for his team's first timeout of this first half. And we'll take a quick break and come right back to Charlottesville. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers. Numbers through the first quarter today on Lamar Jackson, the Louisville quarterback and Heisman Trophy front runner. Not a lot of support uh, from his receivers yet, but there's a lot of game left. Absolutely. Just underway in the second quarter. Second and nine for the Cards. Brandon Radcliffe dropped by Landon Ward. And let's drop in to uh, a studio and Cassidy Hubbard. Hi. Hi, Alan. Taco Bell Studio update number 10. West Virginia trailing Oklahoma State until Skylar Howard hits Shelton Gibson, who lays out for the TD. Mountaineers right now up 10-6. Alan, Mike? Nick yeah, Cassidy, a lot of uh, highly ranked teams on the road today. Going to be a very interesting day. Third down throw, incomplete. As Jackson tried to find Cole Hickatini, and it's fourth down, and the Cardinal punt team comes onto the field again. Right now, Virginia doing a great job of keeping Lamar Jackson in the pocket, making him read one, two, or three, and have to test his accuracy underneath. So there's Daniel Ham back to field the punt. It'll be Mason King kicking again for Louisville. A wobbly one that heads out of bounds, and Virginia will get much better field position than they probably were expecting out of that. Talking about the big day in college football, big Saturday rolls on at 3.30 Eastern when Northwestern visits number six Ohio State at the shoe, then at seven, seventh ranked Nebraska and 11th ranked Wisconsin in Madison at Camp Randall. Both games on ESPN, streaming live on the ESPN app and on Watch ESPN. A lot of folks thought today would be a day when some of those nine remaining unbeatens might get sorted out a little bit because of the number of the highly ranked teams that have to go on the road. Going on the road is tough for some and actually easier for others. Sometimes you like being on the road. Back to throw. Zacchaeus has the grab for the Cavs and a nice gain on first down before Zacchaeus' cannon made the stop for Louisville. 
first down yardage a theme of the day coming in for the Virginia offense something that they've struggled with on the uh, season so far today they've averaged five and a half yards on first down that's exactly what they want to do and Robert and I wants to move the pocket move the launch point vary who gets the ball where they get the ball so it's keep it away from Louisville find the ball in space to his playmakers Kurt Benkert 8 of 14 today 67 yards a touchdown no picks He'll hand to take on Mizell. We'll have the first down and more across midfield. Mizell fighting for extra yards. Nice run. That's the type of run that not only fires up the fans, but the guys on the sidelines. So you see this. He gets hit. He breaks a bunch of tackles, but does a nice job of bouncing right there. Stutter step move, breaks a tackle, continues to carry yards after carry down the field. And that's the most important thing. Nice little slice and dice. We talked about that earlier. He's got a little bit of that himself. A little vegematic going on there. A little vegematic. <laughs> <laughs> Love that turn. Down to the Louisville, 46 yard line and a first and 10. Empty backfield. Mazzell is on the near side in the stack. Ben Kirk will fake the throw and keep it. Starts to slide forward just as he was hit from behind by Keith Kelsey. But a nice run for the quarterback, Kurt Benker. Yeah, and when he initiates the slide is where the ball is marked down. So we actually lost about two yards from where he got down. But when you initiate the slide, you're automatically, the ball is dead at that point. We said they've been averaging five and a half on first down. He got about five and a half there from where they spotted the ball. And we talked about he's not the most mobile, the most nimble, but right now he's doing a great job of getting key yards when he needs it via the quarterback run. Zacchaeus reaching for the sticks looks like he'll be a little bit short but it'll set up a third and very manageable for Olamide Zacchaeus the uh, sophomore from Philadelphia they took a page out of Duke's playbook uh, Cutcliffe has done a great job of maximizing the talent that he had but here they're running the quarterback inside the throwing very safe passes on the outside much as Duke did and getting down to manageable third down situations where they believe they can get that you talked about success on first down breeds success on third down it's funny because for all the success they've had as they come to the line quick. Ben Kurt looking for a spot to sneak it through. And he's going to have the first down. Little Tom Brady-esque hurry to the line and go for the quarterback for the Cavs. He did a great job because the way just straight ahead from the in between the guards was blocked. He went outside, even outside the tackle. So he kept his eyes up and that's a great quarterback because sometimes you get stymied just going straight ahead. Find the hole, stay low. Kurt Ben Kurt was supposed to be East Carolina's quarterback a year ago, got hurt just before the season, missed the whole year, and after a coaching change in spring ball, decided he wanted to do something else, came here to Virginia because this is where the former Pirate head coach, Ruffin McNeil, is on Bronco Mendenhall's staff. Huh. Ryan Santoro with a first down for Virginia. Benford has talked about how rough and McNeil, even though he's not the head coach and he's not an offensive coach here, has been such a support system to him as he's gotten to know Bronco Mendenhall and Robert and I and the rest of the Cavalier staff. And Ruffin McNeil talks to him about getting rid of the ball, protecting his body. This is a great example. He threw that once again before Santoro had even come out of his break. Right now, he feels really good about throwing the ball, where he's throwing it, and the timing. And maybe that sitting down last week is paying dividends to the, today. Mizell cuts back. Nice lunge forward after the hole he was aiming for was plugged up. Stacy Thomas with the stop, 32 for Louisville, and a short gain on first down this time. You know, he's like smoke with a little wind. He just goes through whatever <laughs> crevice. You know, it's amazing. I don't know how he got that nickname, but I can see he's living up to it today. He's not a huge guy, right? He's 5'10", no. 195. But uh, he does find some ways when they get the ball in his hands to make some magic happen. And Kurt pulls it, throws an interception. Jair Alexander. And Louisville continues a string of interceptions. Now the sixth consecutive game where they've intercepted a pass. 
They called Jair Alexander their best cover guy, and he proved it right there. He was in the hip pocket of the receiver and just played the ball the entire time. Fourth interception of the season for Alexander, and so a chance to put some more points on the board goes away for the Cavs. As we watch this, the ball flight, tough decision because that's a points left are taken off the board. College football presented by K Jewelers. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Pacific Life, helping generations of families achieve long-term financial security for over 145 years. And BMW, we only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. On to cello, the home of Thomas Jefferson, one of our nation's founding fathers, the father of the University of Virginia, up on what they call Little Mountain here in beautiful Charlottesville. So after the interception created by the Louisville defense, Lamar Jackson and the call offense take advantage. Throws complete. Cole Hikatini will have a first down just shy of the 30-yard line. We look right here. We've got a one-on-one -on -one matchup, press coverage. As this thing develops, the, back, the defensive back jumps way outside. I think the receiver thinks it's going to be an easy throw. I don't have to do anything, but he's got to protect the quarterback in this regard. That inside ball, he's got to fight and hold off the DB with his body. So Jair Alexander with the uh, opportunity created for his offensive teammates. Jackson eludes one. Throws outside, complete to Travion Samuel, who'll have a short gain on first down. But uh, again, that elusive quarterback, Lamar Jackson, getting away from the on-rushing blitz. And right now, I'd almost say he's trying to throw too much. When he starts getting outside, if he has any increase, I tell him, go. I know coach wants to throw the ball. Coach Virginia said, I love to pass the football. I'm a passing coach. That's what I want to do. So he's got 61 yards of rushing on just four carries. Again, Virginia brings some heat. This time they'll get him. Huge loss. Great job of closing the net. They brought five guys, but they were under control. As you watch this thing develop, take a look. They add the linebacker. They drop a guy out, but there's five guys in the rush, and they just continue to close that net around the quarterback. Don't allow him any big gaps to escape. So third and 15. And converted. And almost out to midfield. As Jamari Staples comes up a little Personal slow. Hands to the face, number 95 defense. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the play. First down. This is going to be a huge play. Yeah. The completion itself. It's Juwan Moy, the true freshman for Virginia, who gets tagged for the foul. Take a look right here. We can see this as this play continues. Just going to have a... Yeah, right there. And at the end, the ball's already gone. And that's a trouble for for defensive guys. And they're always trying to get that thing. But it's the last push. You understand when the ball's thrown, just turn and run and find the football. So add 15 on to the big pass play already. And Jackson looking for more. Got a receiver wide open. Overthrows the top of James Quick. And I don't think the defenders saw the ball was that errant because he was going for the receiver. Thornhill might have had a shot. Another flag down. An eligible receiver downfield. Number 18 was covered up. Five-yard penalty. First down. So had that throw been better, which it Correction. certainly could have been. because A penalty is declined. Second down. Quick was wide open. Right now... James Quick thinks something's going against him today because when he's yeah. wide open, either the, the ball doesn't get there or he's dropped it. Well, Quick, the senior from Louisville, uh, take a breather on this play as it is second down and 10 from the 37. But throw to a wide open receiver outside and Samuel with some nice hands to pull that one in as we check downstairs with Chris. Alan
and Lamar Jackson isn't a very vocal guy on the sidelines, but after their last possession, some of the wide receivers were talking about their missed opportunities. He stood up and he said, enough. We are done talking about that. Well, he's leading his team downfield now after taking the sack and then making the big throw to get the first down. The penalty yardage adding on. Now they have third and very short here. Atkins in at fullback. And Jeremy Smith will get stacked up by Eli Handback for Virginia. They don't get it. It's fourth down. This will be interesting to see if Coach Petrino will go for the field goal or go for it on fourth down. It looks as if he's going to keep the offense on the field. They've had some struggles with the kicking game. And so they'll go for it here on fourth down. If it were me, I would put the ball in Lamar Jackson's hands. I would not give it to anybody else. I would say, go do what you do well. Louisville, four of five, converting fourth downs this season. They won't get it! Juan Thornhill comes in from the corner and gets the sack. With a play action pass and he does a great job of hiding the football behind it but the reality is i would have put him on the edge and let him run it more of a run pass option just as the louisville defense kept virginia from scoring the virginia defense answers back this is espn college football on abc presented by k jewelers After Virginia threw an interception deep in the Louisville red zone, the cards come back, go for it on fourth down, and the Cavalier defense gets the stop. So now Kurt Benkert and the Virginia offense leading by three. Go for it downfield. Andre Lavroni was looking back for the ball. Fans want interference. There is no flag. Not sure on that one. I don't think the DB was playing the ball. I think there was contact, but not so sure. Uh, there's a flag Holding down at the offense. line of scrimmage. Number 78, 10-yard penalty. First down. Which will add insults to the uh, aggravation that Cavaliers fans already feel. Would have not have mattered then anyway. Yeah. Typically, those plays when the quarterback extends a player, breaks the pocket, put a lot of stress on the offensive line. That uh, penalty was on R.J. Proctor, who is in at right guard. For Jack McDonald. And Kirk throws. He'll get some of the penalty yardage back, but not a lot of it. That uh, fourth down play for Louisville a minute ago. Yeah, let's take a look. They were going to run a play action fake. One receiver. This guy is supposed to block the backside. So as we take a look at something, how it develops. Lamar Jackson comes back. He expects his backside to be protected. Hicatini going out to the right side here. Nowhere to go. Really no options in this. He tries to hide the ball. He feels that pressure late. Great job by Virginia defense. And uh, the Coach Petrino not very happy. Uh, Mickey Crum, who was the one that missed that block on Juan Thornhill, uh, hearing about it from the coach. So second down for Virginia. Ben Curtin with time and a receiver. New side, Keon Johnson complete but shy of the first down yardage it'll be third and a couple that was a very small window the outside receiver is supposed to actually clear there and be way down the field to clear that area they were within about three or four yards of each other which makes that a very dangerous throw Johnson the senior from Kannapolis North Carolina steps aside so third and two third and very manageable they did a good job of making up for the penalty which is one of the things they said they wanted to do when they got behind the chains is instead of thinking they had to get it all in one shot break it down into manageable chunks here's Mizell he'll have the first down and more nice job up front by Virginia the Cavaliers you can watch this here see this reach here great pull on the outside good job there and then he just makes a beat watch this little limp leg there get some more yards I love watching him run 41 yards on the ground averaging 5.9 a carry today is Smoke Mizell so a fresh set of downs on the Louisville side of the field he's come to play but that offensive line is giving him a chance to attack the line of scrimmage Benkert throws off the back foot. 
And uh, there is a, a hat down on the near side, so the receiver had either gone out of bounds or been pushed out of bounds and wouldn't have been eligible to catch that ball anyway. Coach Mendenhall was talking to the say, my guy has great vertical leaping ability. He might have caught that ball. Come on. <laughs> Get to a manageable third down. Think it manageable. Get six to eight yards right here if we can. The tight end, Evan Butts, has the grab. They didn't get six to eight. They got about four. It'll be third down and around six for the Cavaliers. And as a player down, near side, a Louisville player, and that is Josh Harvey Clemens, one of the defensive leaders in the backfield for Louisville. And we'll hope this is not serious for him. Injury timeout here in Charlottesville. Josh Harvey Clemens did walk off the field under his own power. Good to see. D. Smith will come in and sub for him, and so it's third down for Virginia. As we work here with just over three minutes to go in this second quarter, and the Cavaliers leading number five Louisville by a field goal. Stories of the game so far, turnovers and missed execution on some plays. Three drops early when Louisville could, had some wide open receivers and could have put 14 points on the board quickly. They didn't. Virginia's defense has stiffened at times when needed. And the Louisville's offense has not been able to convert on a couple of key opportunities like that fourth down a minute ago. They've missed some passes and they've done a great job of containing Lamar Jackson in the pocket. This third down right now, I, I would be uh, I would anticipate them trying to attack the Louisville defense with their inside receivers. They like backs coming out of the backfield. They like those guys to be able to catch the ball and then make the yards after contact or after catch. You see the game clock and play clock running in Virginia again, taking some time off the clock before breaking huddle. And setting up this third down and six. Ben put under pressure. He'll run for it. It's close. It's close. Where they're spotting the ball is very close. And once again, the slide part, it's dead immediately when he initiates the slide, so he doesn't get any yardage beyond that. First down signal. Now, not only did this surprise me, but it actually did surprise the Louisville defense. He's doing a great job of choosing when to take the ball and run. People covered down the field. He saw an opening. Ooh. And they've obviously given him that spot. Wrapped on the noggin while he was sliding there. He did not draw a flag. Here comes Mizell. Nicely grabbed in the defensive backfield by Stacy Thomas, who will have to head to the sideline because his lid came off in uh, making that tackle. His lid, I like that. <laughs> I might have said helmet, but I understand. I think that, that makes perfect sense. Loss of three. Back to the 35-yard line. And clock running now at uh, two minutes to go. Last week, they didn't respond to this opportunity, second and long. Talked about the strategy going forward of getting half the distance back, getting to a manageable third down. Try to find a way to get eight to ten yards on this play. Jordan Ellis joins Mizell in the backfield. And pressure comes. Benford will dump it off. Mizell was running the other way and uh, had a... Big body James Hearns chasing him from around the far side and a flag is down all the way across the far side of the field at the line of scrimmage. And it will be a penalty on the Cavaliers. Illegal formation on the offense. Five players were in the backfield. Penalty is declined. Third down. So this is one of the first third and really long situations that Virginia's faced, I think, in this game. Virginia has converted its last three third down attempts after starting 0 for 4. Let's see what Ben Curt and company can come up with here. As they need a bunch. They need to get all the way down inside the 22-yard line. 
And the field goal kicking range is not all that great for Virginia either. Maybe down around that 25 also. Mizell looking for some help, but a nice cutback. Got to be just short of the line to gain, but what an effort by Taquan Mizell. Louisville player down far side of the field at the 35-yard line. That's Keith Kelsey, another one of the defensive leaders for Louisville, the senior out of Gainesville, Florida. And the medical staff out to attend Paul. to him. Louisville, their second time out of the half. 30-second timeout. So cards take a timeout here. We'll take a look at our Pacific Life game summary right now and show you what's happened so far through what's been a very interesting and entertaining first half, in my opinion. Lamar Jackson. Just shy of 200 total yards, got a touchdown, had some receivers drop some balls on him. Kurt Benkert has played well despite the interception, I thought. I think he's done a great job. He's made some key throws. He got better at a couple of series where he was off a little bit, but his timing on the touchdown throw after the takeaway was really key, and he's made some key runs to get yardage for first downs. And the combination of Louisville not executing, making some mistakes, and Virginia's defense playing, uh, executing what they intended to do today, has kept uh, Louisville bottled up. It's interesting. This is a great day for football. The surface is very good, but right now Louisville seems a little bit out of sync, and some of their best players are fighting to stay on the field, but guys like Kelsey and Josh Harvey Clemens, they can all afford to keep playing without them. Let's see if we could see what happened with Kelsey. 55 here. Ooh, ankle just got caught there. Yeah, that didn't look. That was a self inflicted wound, and his ankle just rolled trying to stop the cutback. That's hard, and he's a he's a physical guy. He's almost 240 pounds. Sometimes uh, athletes get bigger, stronger, faster, but the feet aren't getting that much bigger, and the ankle's not that much bigger. So got a big fourth down here for Virginia, and the offense is coming back onto the field. It is fourth down and about one. Mentioned field goal kicking has been a problem for Virginia, so... Rival Mendenhall choosing to go for it here, it appears. I think it's more about needing touchdowns rather than field goals and knowing that Louisville is the highest scoring team in the nation. Virginia's done a great job of defending them so far, but they're going to need touchdowns to win this game. So because of the timeout, just the play clock runs here. A minute 20 to go. Mizell's got it. He's looking to throw. He does throw. Well out of bounds. And the Louisville defense sniffed that one out well. And they'll get the ball on downs. And uh, that game clock never ran when that play started. So they'll have to check that. All right, I said there was a minute 20 to go before the snap. And Louisville had all 11 men up at the line of scrimmage. They were in man-to-man -man pressure look. Uh, I'm not sure I would have gone with that type of play call. I'd rather just put the quarterback on the edge with a run pass option. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. Louisville go downs. First down. Take a look. Here's the play before it starts. It's a around uh, the incoming around trying to throw. And I think they were hoping that they'd get uh, a look from the defense that sort of got lost in translation. Louisville was very aware of what was happening. You did a great job. Please adjust it. the game clock to one minute, 14 seconds. One minute, 14 seconds. As should be done. And so they'll have a minute and 14 to try and go 77 yards downfield. Will Lamar Jackson and the Cardinal offense. They're capable. Very capable. As they don't need that much time. As we've seen many times. He throws on the run. Dropped. Reggie Bonifant had it go in and out of his hands, and a holding penalty has been called on the Holding. Way. Offense, number 61. 10-yard penalty, first down. You know, when, when things start going bad, they continue, and sometimes you start to press or worry a little bit. These are balls these guys can catch in their sleep, and they've done all year long, but right now they're having trouble just catching, focusing on the ball, thinking about trying to run, whatever it is. It would have been called back anyway due to the holding penalty. Tobiah Hewley, the senior center, with the holding call. 
Jackson hit as he throws, but again has a receiver wide open with a lot of green ahead of him. Travion Samuel knocked out of bounds at the 40 as we check with Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Allen. West Virginia, Oklahoma State after Mountaineers fumble. Mason Rudolph to Chris Lacey puts the Cowboys up 13-10, and they tacked on another one, now up 20-10, and Michigan up 24-10 over Michigan State on ESPN. Guys? Yeah, Cassidy, that West Virginia Oak State score is an eye raiser. Keep an eye on that one as the day goes on for sure. The Jackson escaping trouble with field ahead. Tracked down from behind, but not until he's down to the 45-yard line. That was Jawan Moy, the big freshman defensive Holding end. Offense, Oop. number 74. 10-yard penalty, first down. Louisville is one of the most penalized teams in the nation. It hasn't mattered that often, but today it will matter if they continue to shoot themselves in the foot. More ticks off the clock, and more yardage wasted. Durant Christian tagged for the foul. Take a look at the right tackle right here. Watch what happens as the play starts. Oh, right there at the very end, once again, trying to drag him down. The player's already passed him. You guys have to understand where he is and where the ball is at that time. Great throw and catch recovery, though. Put themselves in a manageable situation. Out to the 45-yard line. 34 seconds to go. Jalen Smith with the reception. I might have taken a timeout there. They're saving. They got two. So why? Incomplete. Out of bounds. Chris Moore on the defense. And it's third down. I think that was really a mistake to play before when it got caught inbounds to not take a timeout. It cost them almost 20 seconds. Third and four, and 18 seconds left. Gonna tuck it and run. Flag comes in from the offensive backfield. Jackson holding offense number 50. 10 yard penalty, third down. Khalil Hunter, the left guard. These are also being created by the effort of the Virginia defensive line. We take a look. If Virginia continues to push this pocket, watch the left guard here. Take a look right here. See what happens. Who engages Time in. Out. Louisville. Their final timeout of the I half. I didn't see anything this there. This is a full one-minute team timeout. Well, what I do see is a lot of energy on the Virginia sideline as uh, try to see if they can give their team a boost going into the locker room. And I do see a rather aggravated coach on the far sideline. Well, how many of us would have thought that Louisville would be attempting to kick a field goal at the end of the first half to tie the game up? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fifth-ranked cards quite heavily favored over Virginia, who's 2-5 and five on the season coming in. They've had their struggles, uh, the Cavs have. But today, again, I don't want to take anything away from Virginia, but I almost feel like you split the blame, if you have to blame something. Maybe that's not the right word for what's going on for that scoreline between Louisville's lack of execution and Virginia's defense. I mean, that was just the third holding penalty on this drive for the Cardinals alone. I think credit Virginia with playing with energy, taking advantage of the takeaway earlier in the game, question Louisville in terms of clock management, in terms of the penalties. The penalties have been a killer to them, and they definitely have dropped passes today they normally would catch. That thing can become a disease that affects everybody on the team. Yeah. Five penalties, accepted penalties for 48 yards on the Cardinals in this half. Just two on the Cavaliers. So the ball backed up again to the 35-yard line. It's third down and long with 12 seconds to go. Down he goes. Andrew Brown, nine, got there for the Cavs. Bronco Mendenhall was on the field signaling timeout, so I don't believe the half is over. Even though some of the Louisville players are running for the locker room, Bronco Mendenhall ran onto the field and signaled timeout. Virginia called timeout with three seconds left on the clock. So it sets up a fourth down 
Yep. And a chance to either try and come after a punt or set up a punt return. Yeah, he'll he'll make them do another play. It's just trying to get. Uh, you see him right there. He's coming in, running, showing the <laughs> sign, getting there. Definitely with three seconds left at least. So what Louisville can do now is they could punt it. They could just take the ball and run it and down it because three seconds. Once the ball is snapped, it's live. It's what they could do, but they've sent the offense back onto the field. That's what I'm saying. I would just run the ball. I would run it and say three seconds. There's no way to call another timeout. If you run the ball, unless you fumble the snap, but just having to do one more play gives Virginia one more opportunity to make something happen. So uh, three, four, seven, well, now six defensive backs deep for the Cavaliers. Four receivers running downfield. Jackson lets it fly. He's got a receiver. But is not going to have any running room. Travion Samuel knocked down at the 35-yard line. And the half will end with the Cardinals scoring their fewest points this year in a half. And Virginia leading by three. Chris... What were you upset about with the officials? Oh, they called three holding penalties in a two-minute drive. And then, before the game, they always say, anything you need, Coach, we'll come over and talk to you. You won't come over and talk to me. Appreciate it. Well, Coach aggravated and his team behind. Halftime here in Charlottesville. It's 10-7 against number five, Louisville. Halftime coming up after this message and a word from our ABC station. on ESPN, a day that will end with Florida State Clemson tonight. is starting with Louisville and Virginia from Charlottesville on the afternoon and a surprising scoreline as we get ready to start this second half. The Cavaliers lead the fifth-ranked Cardinals by a field goal. Alan Bestwick with College Football Hall of Famer Coach Mike Bellotti. You've been pouring over the stat sheets. We've been talking about all the various things that happened in the first half. How did this scoreline get to be this way at this point in the game versus what most of us expected it to be. Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, basically kept Louisville out of the end zone. They're the highest scoring team in the nation. They've only been getting in there one time and Lamar Jackson has been somewhat contained. He's got 242 yards but only one scoring pass and Virginia on the other hand has taken advantage of the opportunity. They got a takeaway. They converted it to a touchdown. That's the difference in the game. Well, Louisville will have the chance coming out of the locker room to get first crack at it because Virginia won the initial toss of the game and took the ball, so back deep to receive, Dawkins and Williams. And the second half underway here in Charlottesville. This will be Malik Williams. He will take a knee in the end zone and a touchback. Louisville will start from the 25. Let's check downstairs with Chris Button. Alan, Bronco Mendenhall didn't give a big message at halftime. He said, I just sat back and I let my assistant coaches speak. The reason that he wanted to do that is he didn't want some rah-rah. He wanted each of them to focus on execution and focus on playing football. So I asked him, how do you focus on playing football and not on the scoreboard right now and leading the number five country? He said exactly that, that they need to go out and think about every single play. And that's why I had my assistants do the talking, not me. So Ron Jackson hands off to Brandon Ratcliffe. Who won't get much, if anything, on first down. This just the second time this season that Louisville's been trailing at the half. And the fewest points they've scored in a half this season. In the first half this season. To me, the question is whether Virginia believes yet. We're going to find out. And whether Louisville is rattled enough by the score to be frustrated or to panic a little bit. Going to try and get the ground game going to start this second half that was uh, pretty well lacking in the first half. Radcliffe again, and it'll set up third down and just about five and a half. Yeah, for a team that's ranked sixth in the nation rushing the football, Virginia's done a great job of taking the run away from Louisville tonight. The Cardinals can't run the ball with the exception of Lamar Jackson, and those have been typically on broken plays. Just one of six on third down in the game are the cards. 
Jackson will swing it out near side to Jeremy Smith. Oh, that's going to be close. That's very close. Looked as the mark is a little bit short, so it brings up a decision situation early in this game. I, I don't think it's time to go for it, but I don't think Coach Petrino does either. Quinn Blanding chased Smith out of bounds, and the Louisville punt team comes out of the field. That's a big moment to start this third quarter for Virginia. I would definitely have my safe punt return team on the field, which means it's primarily defensive players that know how to... to basically defend any formation they may see. It's fourth at about, what, a foot, two feet? Yeah, maybe even less. They will kick. Daniel Hamm has to back up to his seven. Nice room. Up the middle, drags a player forward to the 30-31 yard line. And a good special teams play to start this third quarter for the Virginia Cavaliers. Well, tonight, we mentioned number three Clemson and number 12 Florida State down at Joe Campbell in Tallahassee, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC, streaming live on the ESPN app and on Watch ESPN. I know I'm looking forward to watching that one and seeing how it turns out. You think about this one, in Tallahassee, Florida State is 11-1 and one against Clemson in the last 25 years in Tallahassee. Two of the better coaches in the game right there. No match which tonight. You're right. I'm excited to watch that one. There's Taquan Mizell. They had a huge first half for the Cavaliers. He was chased down from behind by James Hearns, but he's still falling forward. We're going to stop his forward progress back at the 36-yard line. So give him about five, and it'll be second down and five. Taquan Mizell, the senior from Virginia Beach. They call him Smoke. Fifth in the ACC starting the day, averaging five and a half yards a carry. And that was a little bit of a rugby scrum at the end. Got a little <laughs> push, which was great. Yep. Add on some yardage. Kurt Benkert, Virginia quarterback. Pumps, throws, complete. First down. Ryan Santoro will move the sticks for Virginia. The Louisville defense trying to keep a streak going that has served them quite well in this season so far, of not allowing a touchdown on the first drive of the second half this season. We asked Coach Grantham if he did something special with the talk or the adjustments. He says, no, we just continue to work the game all along. We're talking about what plays we saw, what plays we want to take away, what the offense's tendencies are. We get a chance to hyper-focus during halftime. And what complementary plays might come off the same looks we got in the first half. Mizell with blockers ahead. Out to the 45-yard line. They'll mark him short about the 46-yard line. That's close to a first down into Louisville territory. That was a very impressive play by the offensive front. You can see guys staying on blocks for 15 or 20 yards. When you run from sideline to sideline and not one holding call or anything like that, that's excellent execution. I'm really pleased with that. As an offensive coach, you say the odds of that happening often are very few. Yeah. Three running backs in the game that time. That looked like a student body left. Exactly. Again, Mizell. Nice play up from the defensive backfield to stop him after about a one-yard game. Getting up from the bottom of the pile is Josh Harvey Clemens. Back in the game, remember he went out earlier. Looked like maybe he took a, a cleat or something into his uh, side or his rib cage. Where you were mentioning three running backs, multiple receivers, multiple tight ends. Robert and I talked about mixing up the personnel groups, mixing up the formations, changing the launch point, trying to equal the athleticism or make the athleticism on the field equal for his team. Yeah, this is a look that Louisville didn't see in the first half, right? Exactly. And flag in from the far side, false start will cost false start, the Cavs offense, some yardage. Number 88, five yard penalty, second down. And I would tell a receiver that far away from the ball, watch the ball being snapped. You should never jump off sides out there. A quick mention also Keith Kelsey the senior linebacker that went out of the game earlier for Louisville is back So a couple of key players that were nicked up earlier 
are both back on the field for the cards. And two guys that are very instrumental in that defense who both have increased their stock from a pro standpoint this year by playing. They're leading their teams in tackles. They're some of the most dominant defensive players in the league. Bankard pulls it and throws it. Coming back for it. Donnie Dowling gets away. Hurdles one and is down to the 10 yard line. The ball came out. Was he down? Yes. First down, Virginia. You know, players watch film and watch television. <laughs> it's obviously Lamar who I can hurdle to. Yeah. Take a look, a little play action pass, moves the pocket. Does a great job of coming back to the ball, reaching out, then breaks the tackle right there. Goes up over the top. Almost regains his winning. The ball is definitely out, but he gets it. And the ball's out inside. Oh, yeah. But he came back to he get it. came back, and he's got yeah. the ball under control right there. Clear recovery there. So first and goal for the Cavaliers. Back to throws. Zacchaeus, touchdown, Virginia. That idea about not giving up a touchdown on the first drive, scratch that. Olamide Zacchaeus, the sophomore from Philadelphia, caps off the impressive march downfield for the Cavalier offense. We've talked about earlier, they're one of the best teams in the nation in terms of scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Here, a nice just slant to the inside receiver. Great body position, shielded the defensive back away from the ball with his body. Did a nice job of hauling it in. So Sam Hayward on for the point after try. And Virginia adds seven to its lead. They're up on number five, Louisville by 10. Six plays, 69 yards downfield in three and a half minutes. Benker to Zacchaeus for the Cavalier touchdown. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Presented by K Jewelers. The home fans in Charlottesville are enjoying what they're seeing for sure. Ten-point lead for the Cavaliers after stopping Louisville on the opening drive of the second half and then going downfield and putting it in the end zone themselves. So Virginia now to kick off to Louisville, who needs an answer here to keep this wave of momentum that the guys wearing the dark shirts seem to be building up. Through the end zone and out and a touchback 25 will be where Louisville will start at 42 yard play on the last drive was huge and it's it's not just the catch but it's the run by Dowling afterwards he takes off breaks a tackle right there and then decides he's gonna hurdle somebody down the field ball comes out but he gets it back and then just a nice easy throw inside great position great throw great timing a little bit of tempo there keep Louisville off balance so Lamar Jackson and the cards start at the 25. Jackson lost the ball. He fell back on it. But dropped the ball amidst a swarm of blue jerseys. Lowell's trying to find a way to jumpstart their run game. They've gone to the speed option here with the quarterback. Unfortunately, runs into his own man. Alignment getting pushed back. Ball comes out. Lucky to get back. The loss moves him back four to the 21, second and 14. Throws downfield, intercepted! Quinn Branding at the 25 and 20. And down to the 15-yard line. Lamar Jackson picked off for just the fifth time this season. An injured Virginia player at the 15 on the far hash mark. If Louisville has not pushed the panic button, at least their hand is on it at this point. So the 30-yard return on the interception... And an injury timeout here in Charlottesville. Lamar Jackson picked off. Virginia has the ball. 
College Football presented by K Jewelers. Brought to you by the all-new Honda Ridgeline. For truck tough things and everyday things. Taco Bell's rolled chicken tacos. And Aflac. In just one day, we process, approve, and pay. One day pay only from Aflac. I never knew Edgar Allan Poe was a student here at the University of Virginia. Until I went out on the lawn, designed by Thomas Jefferson to be the center of the university, it's surrounded by housing for the students. It will be a rocking place later today if Virginia is able to find a way to score this win. After the interception, Cavaliers with the ball at the Louisville 15-yard line. Kurt Benkert, the quarterback, trying to see if he could get his team into the end zone again. The handoff. Stumbling forward was Mizell. By the way, the injured player was freshman defensive back Chris Moore. He did walk off the field under his own power for Virginia. Up to this point, I would give a game ball to the offensive line for Virginia because they've been opening holes for Mizell now. He's doing a lot of work on his own, but he's getting a chance to get ahead of steam and attack the line of scrimmage. Mizell, 12 carries, 57 yards, averaging 4.8 a pop. And again, the double running backs to either side of Kurt Benker. The read on that option looked like something out of an Edgar Allan Poe novel, didn't it? Well, it, it was, was dark. Yeah, yeah, it was dark. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, they did a great job of covering. They had a man for the quarterback and a man for the pitch. And good decision by Becker just to get upfield, save whatever yardage he could. So third down here for Virginia. They need to get to the five-yard line to get a fresh set of downs. They're three for three in the red zone today are the Cavs. Benkert under pressure unloads tipped almost intercepted that was close Stacy Thomas made a break on the ball at the pylon and almost took it away that ball was thrown a little bit late Benkert not the fastest he eludes the rush but here you see this throw and it's a little bit behind and this ball should have been intercepted the receiver intended receiver became a DB just the perfect time credit Evan Butts the tight end for coming back to break that one up so field goal try on now Sam Hayward the walk on formerly of the Cavaliers soccer team played in their national championship team of a couple of years ago and that's going to miss. So after the turnover, the Cavaliers get nothing for it, and the defense has to come back onto the field again and see if they can try and sustain the momentum. It's a huge victory for Louisville, just keeping them out. This is ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers. After the Louisville turnover on the Jackson interception, Virginia comes away with nothing on a missed field goal, possibly tipped. But either way, Jackson and the Cardinal offense get a reprieve and start at their own 20-yard line, trailing by 10. Wide open over the middle. And Cole Hicatini has the ball all the way out to the 41-yard line as we check down with Chris. Allen, after Lamar Jackson's interception, the entire offense stood around, huddled up, jumping up and down, and it was led by Brandon Ratcliffe. Just telling the guys, come on, we got this. And then Lamar comes over literally skipping and says, guys, that was on me. I got that interception. That was on me. And, Mike, that's something that you've noticed. On bad reads, he's the first one to take ownership. There's no question about it. He understands so who's responsible, who's culpable. He's going to come back. It's a little scary because he's sort of been quiet in this game. That type of play where he made the mistake, I have a feeling he's going to try to make up for it on this drive. Jackson had 61 yards rushing in the first quarter, was minus 28 rushing since then because of all the sacks. But he got the edge on that one and moved the sticks and has the cards into Virginia territory. When you get sacked as a quarterback, your eyes are tending to stay downfield too long. Brandon Radcliffe with another big chunk of runs. 11 yards on first down before Quinn Blanding knocked him down and Louisville marching right down the field here. I think somebody challenged that Louisville offensive line that, hey, we got to be able to run the football, not just with Lamar, but with anybody back there. Let's get Brandon Radcliffe started. 
I almost felt after the missed field goal, a little bit of air come out of the building here, just a little bit. No question. When you're the underdog, you have that type of opportunity to go ahead and get a touchdown, and you get nothing out Ball's of it. Ball's out. Who's got it? He fell back on it. Sorry about that, Mike. That's okay. No, no, I agree. I was going to go to the same place. I think ball security is, is something that you have to assume a guy like Lamar Jackson understands it because he's out there all the time running through the line of scrimmage with that ball. He's got to protect it. Jackson, who got all 10 first place votes in the ESPN Heismanology poll. Trying to lead his team back from down 10 in the second half against Virginia. Cavs bring pressure. Dumps it off to the tight end. Hickertini, who is down to the 30-yard line, a yard short of the first down. Chris Peace made the stop for Virginia. But a very patient Jackson there. Very patient, very heads-in play. You're right. He saw the blitz coming. They didn't have enough to protect it. He just held on to the ball a little bit. Saw his favorite target, Hickettini, the big guy over the middle. Got it to him. Third and about two. He keeps it. Danger, danger. Inside the 10, knocked out at the 8. When, when you have the threat of the run going straight ahead, you commit to the inside run. You're putting him on an island outside. Here he pulls the ball, and this is the scary part. Like I said, it's hard to tackle him in the open field. His acceleration, and he also has strength through the contact zone. You wouldn't understand for a guy 205 pounds. Good blocking by the receivers outside, too. He'll keep it there, but he won't be fooling. Micah Kaiser for Virginia, 53, who was right on the spot. There was some problem there with the mesh point again i think he wanted to keep it the running back thought he should get it uh that ball almost came out got to be very careful down here they need to get points that mesh in the zone read is something you take for granted it's not as easy when your eyes are looking reading the defense it's the running back's responsibility to set the mesh All kinds of time, and a receiver in the back of the end zone, Reggie Bonifon, for a Louisville touchdown. Louisville didn't get to be the highest scoring team in the nation by not being able to convert opportunities. That looked pretty easy coming down after just turning the ball over before. So marching right down the field after throwing the interception, the defense managing to get a stop and not give up any points on the missed field goal. Louisville goes right down the field and are about to try and make this a three-point game if Blanton Creaky can knock the point after try through. And he does. An eight-yard touchdown pass from Lamar Jackson. His 19th of this season has Louisville back within a field goal. We're just getting started with the big day of college football, but when it's all done, don't miss Sports Center at night. Updates from Game Four of the World Series, the college football, NBA, NHL highlights get you ready for NFL Sunday. It's Sports Center at night. After Nebraska, Wisconsin on ESPN, streaming on the ESPN app and on Watch ESPN. So Louisville back within a field goal. Anthony George has the ball teed up for the Redbirds. Daniel Ham is back deep along with Joe Reed for Virginia. How do the Cavs respond to facing a little adversity now? It's Reed. 24-yard line is where he will be knocked out. Opportunity for us to cue the duck. And our Aflac trivia question, Virginia 2-22-1 all-time against the team ranked in the AP Top 5. Who are the two teams they defeated? Think about it. I will, because I have no idea off the top of my head. <laughs> well, I do. Okay. Not because they've handed me a card with the answer on it, because they haven't, actually. That wasn't our original question on the day. I believe that you probably know that. You're a pretty good historian. Yeah, I, I do know the answer. So, Kirk Vancouver, the Cavaliers offense, starting at their 25-yard line. Take one, Mizell. Get three or four. 
on first down. Here's the answer. The two wins actually came against the same team. Ah, flag. Remember when Florida State joined the ACC? Well, Virginia beat them twice, a decade apart. Both times, Florida State ranked in the top five. If I had to guess, that would have been my guess, I admit. Well, why didn't you then? You'd have no, been right. because I, you know... You'd have gotten the big know. prize. If somebody thought I'd probably... Somebody slipped me the answer. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew it because it was in the game notes. Uh. Here for the game. <laughs> you do that so well. <laughs> Second and seven. And movement. And it's going to cost him five. Donnie Dowling with a little flinch. Seven on the near side. Ball start. Offense, number seven. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And I don't know if it's automatic, but he walked right off the field. I don't know if that's standard procedure. If you jump offside, you're coming out for a yeah. play. Or they were changing the group anyway. Well, they have done a lot of personnel changing. Uh, very frequently all all game long and i don't know if it's just to take again we talked about the the strategy duke used about taking up every possible second of the play clock i think it's that i think it's presenting different looks to the defense it's also trying to get better matchups that favor your team back to the twin setbacks now jordan ellis and albert reed in van kirk's gonna roll and lead the receiver a little too far as he got knocked down that was kelsey keith kelsey pursuing him for louisville and it brings up another crucial situation for the Cavaliers. Bengert, nice job of eluding the pocket and buying time, but none of his receivers could get open down the field. That's the athleticism matchup in the secondary that Louisville has the advantage. And there you see the numbers on the day for Bengert on third down. And they need 12 here to keep the drive going. Dump the screen to Mizell. Nicely played in the open field by Jair Alexander, 10 for Louisville to knock him down with a very short gain, and the punt team comes on for the Hoos. Jair, the best cover guy, but also one of the best tacklers in the open field. So the Virginia offense couldn't get it into the end zone before when they got the ball in the red zone after the interception. After Louisville's score, they can't answer with any kind of sustained drive, and the Cards' offense is going to be coming right back onto the field. And I give some credit to the Louisville defense. They certainly knew that their backs were against the wall. They've done a great job the last two series. They have. Are they going to come after this punt? They're showing that they are coming. Conti gets it away. They'll take a nice Virginia bounce. It will not be played by Alexander, and they'll go all the way down to the 23-yard line, and that is where Louisville will take over. A look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Goodyear. Of course, this is the AP Top 10. The college football playoff first rankings of the year come out on Tuesday night. Alabama with the bye. Michigan is handily handling Michigan State. And that Clemson-Florida State game, I think Washington-Utah is going to be a good, good one, too. I think it's a great one. And I think that'll be two teams that are very equally matched up front. They both have great line of scrimmage play. I would not put Ohio State number six. I have that same top five. But I put Nebraska up there. But I'll tell you what, I think that they're going to, it's going to be interesting today. And this one right here at the bottom with Oklahoma State leading West Virginia 27-10 near the end of the third quarter. Injured player down for Virginia on the punt coverage. That's Kirk Garner. Garner, a junior defensive back from Baltimore, right on the near sideline in front of the Cavalier bench. While the Virginia medical staff attends to him and helps him up. Reminder about the ongoing Big Ten action on ESPN today. Northwestern and number six Ohio State in Columbus later on at 3.30, then at 7. Number seven Nebraska and number 11 Wisconsin in Madison. Both games on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. I think we're going to find out if Mike Bradley's team is for real this year. Wisconsin has a great defense. They're a tough team at home. The winner of that game, I, I, I'd like to say that if Nebraska can stay undefeated, they'll earn a lot of respect. So now trailing by just three, Lamar Jackson and the Cardinal offense goes to work. Got a wide open runner. Jamari Staples out to the 40. Thornhill knocks him down at the 42, but they have had wide open men all game. 
when you try to keep the top on the defense, which means you're deep as the deepest, and you're trying to contain the quarterback, there's a void in the area and the flats and the intermediate routes. Right now, Lamar Jackson and Louisville are taking advantage of that. So huge gain on that one of 20 yards. And a first down from the 43. Jackson's going to go over the top. That looked to me like Seth Dawkins pulled up just a little bit. Uh, sorry, that wasn't Dawkins. That was Reggie Bonifant. Pulled up a little bit, and uh, the ball was a little too long anyway. Usually, Lamar Jackson does not put that much air on the ball. He tends to throw. His arm is so strong, it's like a laser. There's less trajectory on it. I think that's what he was anticipating. Maybe a cut across the face rather than the deeper throw. So second down and 10. Pressure. Dumps it off. Very young Samuel. He's wrapped up and dropped. Third down coming up. We check in with Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Alan. West Virginia's undefeated season serious jeopardy after an interception. Mason Rudolph capitalizes with a two-yard run. Oklahoma stayed up 27-10 in the third. Alan, Mike, back to you. How about those Cowboys? Well, West Virginia's bubble may have burst. They're questioning how strong their schedule was early and how good a team they were. But Oklahoma State, they're a tough team. Third and 13 and a first down completion as Jackson throws to the freshman Seth Dawkins, and they'll keep the drive alive. How many receivers that are 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 200 pounds do they have? There's another one. They look like clones out there, but that's a great play. Nice throw because that they needed to get that ball down to the sticks. They got it past the sticks. Enough for the first down. Virginia again brings pressure. Dump off a little bit behind Jalen Smith as uh, Jackson had to get rid of the ball with a lot of heat coming at him. Micah Kaiser was in his face. Leading tackler, tackled the screen earlier, got the pressure there. He's all over the field today. Kaiser, the junior from Baltimore. So second down and 10. Jeremy Smith in for the cards, 34 in the backfield. With a normal team, you'd say, let's get to a manageable third down. Let's get five to six yards on this play with Lamar Jackson. He may go all the way. He may take a shot down the field. Hard to tell with a Bobby Petrino coached offense. He scored a significant number of his rushing touchdowns on first down this year, Jackson has. Trying to change directions. And a nice job to bring him down. That was Chris Moore. 39 for Virginia. Discipline pursuit. That's what Virginia has to do to be successful. That's what they did on this play. This is a speed option going out that way. They get spread out. But watch their down. Stays very patient there. Keeps his leverage. Doesn't overcommit and is in a position to make the play when Lamar Jackson turns around. So big loss sets up another third down for the Cardinals. And that will happen when we begin the fourth quarter here in Charlottesville. Virginia leapt out to a lead, but Louisville is trying to claw its way back. Back after this from your ABC station. We start the fourth quarter in Charlottesville with number five Louisville trailing Virginia by a field goal and facing a third down and 17. Lamar Jackson, the Heisman Trophy favorite from his 49-yard line. Incomplete at his fourth down. At this point, I would caution Virginia do not be conservative. Don't protect this lead. Aggressively try to extend this lead. So the punt team comes on to try and pin Virginia deep. Mason King will kick. Daniel Ham is back deep for the Cavaliers. That's a big defensive stand for Virginia. Huge, tremendous play and very much needed at this point in time. Ham takes it at the 14, looks for some running room. He'll get to the 22 before he's knocked down. And that is where the Cavs will take over. Look at our Pacific Life game summary now. Louisville has turned the ball over twice in this game, plus turned it over once on downs, and that's been a big part of the story. 
and Virginia was able to convert the first time, could not the second time, despite having great field position. We thought that took a little wind out of their sails, but that defensive stand right there certainly helped. Lamar Jackson, the numbers on the day for him, 338 yards, two touchdowns against one interception. Can he lead his team back in this fourth quarter? That last drive stalled out. And now Kurt Benkert and the Cavaliers take over, throwing far side, intercepted! It's Alexander again! And he's got a lot of grass. Caught up to from behind, finally, and knocked down by Keon Johnson. But a huge defensive game for Jair Alexander. And Virginia has given the ball right back to Louisville. Very poorly thrown ball. Underthrown into coverage. You see it come off right here. He's trying to throw to a spot in the hole in the zone. Doesn't find it. Jair Alexander, as you talked about, is the guy. He just has a knack for finding the football, high-pointing it right there, and then some amazing acrobatics to get a great return, set it up the 12-yard line. Pressure now Already, on Virginia's defense. Already in the red zone are the Cardinals' offense. Looking to see if they can take the lead. Here's Brandon Ratcliffe. Nice lateral pursuit by Micah Kaiser, 53, for Virginia to hold that to a short game. Micah Kaiser's been on every single play the Just last couple of series. No, he's been there. He's pressed with the quarterbacks. He's made tackles everywhere. Did a great job. He's first in the ACC and sixth in the nation in tackles per game. Is Kaiser the junior from Baltimore. Give him two, Radcliffe on the carry. Second down and eight. Cardinals can get a first down at the Virginia two. Jackson throws, touchdown, Cardinals. Reggie Bonifant with his second in short order. That's how quick it happens. Take advantage of turnovers. You get a takeaway, cash it in for a touchdown. Had been the difference in the game the other way. Now switch to Louisville's favor. So the Cardinals will take the lead and try and make it a four-pointer with the point after try coming here from Blanton Creaky. And he got it through. When you're playing the number five team in the country and you are the underdog, you cannot make mistakes. Kurt Benkert's second interception of the day set the Louisville offense up in the red zone. And they wasted little time punching it in to take the lead. Virginia scored the first points of the game. They've led the game since late in the first quarter, but now Louisville is on top, the fifth-ranked team, with a four-point advantage over the Cavaliers. What's the mindset of the underdogs? What are they going to do with the football when they get that opportunity to come from behind? So Blanton Creaky to kick off. Joe Reed. Go field it at the wall. Decent return out to the 25. That's where the Virginia offense will come back onto the field. And as they do so, we check downstairs with Chris. Allen, Virginia offensive coordinator Robert and I came up to Ben Kirk and he took the play sheet and he started crossing things off. He said, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. Here's what we're going to work with. So he's obviously trying to simplify things for his quarterback. That's what they've said they've had to do every single game. They start with a play sheet on offense and defense and they end up scratching off a lot more plays than they'd really like which limits the matchups you can create, but with the, you have to find a way to put your players in a position to have success. Have a Louisville player down on the far side of the field right in front of their bench and where their huddle was before coming onto the field. And he got caught in that pile over there on the return. Obviously, the number a little hard to uh, to see there. So while we have the uh, timeout and they work with the injured player, a uh, big day for Louisville in the race to be the top-ranked one-loss team. Cardinals are coming into this game. There are nine undefeated teams, nine one-loss teams. 
And of course, four teams to make the college football playoffs. Some key games among the one loss teams as we look at these uh, final five weeks or so of the season. I like Washington. They're a complete football team. Utah runs the ball very well. I'm not sure they throw it well enough to compete with a team like Washington. Uh, that Nebraska at Ohio State, you know, hopefully Ohio State figures out what happened to them uh, the other week yeah. against Penn State. But uh, they're still one of the most talented teams in the nation. And of course, Louisville. Uh, with a big game coming up against Houston. Taquan Mizell will have a short game. The injured player was Isaac Stewart for Louisville. He did get up and walk off the field uh, with the medical staff, so that was good to see. And Kelsey with another stop. Keith Kelsey for the Cardinals, and it's second down and eight. One of the things the Louisville defense has stiffened on first down. They have not allowed Virginia to have as much success on third down. Thus the third, excuse me, on first down. Thus the third downs have been more difficult. Defensive coordinator there for the Cardinals, Todd Grantham. Nothing. Jonathan Grinard. Nice play, 58 for the Cardinals, and it's third and long. And this is not what you want to be in because typically this has to be a throwing down now. When the defense knows they're going to throw, they can do some things with the pass rush and or coverage combinations that can put stress on the, the quarterback. Keep an eye on James Hearns, 99 for Louisville. He's a big pass rusher off the edge. He's poised on third down. Here he comes. The throw it to Mizell. And he'll be played nicely in the open field and wrestled down by Tremaine Washington. A flag comes in late on the second hit on Mizell. That may be a huge break for the Cavaliers. If it is, once again, a penalty derailing the Louisville defense. After the play, first foul, unnecessary roughness, number 72 offense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. The down counts, fourth down. It's on Virginia. Eric Smith, the senior right tackle, tagged for the foul. So the punt team comes on. And now all the momentum residing on the side of the uh, guys wearing the white shirts as punter Nicholas Conti will stand a couple of yards deep in his own end zone. Reggie Bonifant, who scored the last two touchdowns for the Cardinals, is back this time to receive the punt. No matter where the punt goes, they should receive great field position out of this exchange. Yes, they will. Just outside their own 40-yard line. Cardinals with the ball and a four-point lead. 12 minutes to go. College football presented by K Jewelers. For 100 years, every kiss begins with K. And in part by AT&T, mobilizing your world. And the Venture Card from Capital One. Earn unlimited double miles you can use on any airline, anytime. The Rotunda, the most famous of the campus building here on the University of Virginia campus. The Thomas Jefferson statue out front, so much history inside and all over this area. As we walked around the grounds, as they call it. It's not a campus here, it's no. the grounds. Pretty amazing campus and the history contained there. And I mean, it was amazing for me to walk around and through there. So Louisville's offense back on the field, starting at their own 41-yard line. Lamar Jackson will hand it off. Brandon Radcliffe, not much. Yeah, I'd give him maybe two, two and a half before Andrew Brown drags him down for Virginia. Second down here for the Cards. Uh, what a take charge effort this has been, aided by turnovers in this second half for the number five team in the country. They've been challenged today for sure. They have been challenged, and I'm still not sure they're going to feel very good regardless of the score, but the reality is they're putting themselves in a position to win. Under pressure, Jackson throws, complete to Bonifant again. And he's across the Virginia 40-yard line with a first down. Was that Bonifant or Staples? That was Staples, my apologies. The difficulty right now for Virginia is they're trying to contain the quarterback, put a rush guy there. They're just light in the secondary in terms of the athleticism to cover that variety of receivers that Louisville, Louisville puts out there.
Jackson to Hicatini. He'll have a first down. Attempt to try and strip the ball by Kaiser when he came in from behind, but Hicatini, the big tight end, had it locked down. And you've got to be so aware of Lamar Jackson when he gets on the edge. You've got to be very careful about challenging him because he can run around you and it opens up those throwing lanes down the field. They did not look in sync or sharp at the start of the game, they being the Louisville offense. But uh, there's no denying in this uh, second half, they've been much better. And another huge gain on first down. Brandon Radcliffe, the fifth-year senior for Miami, will get 11 on first and 10. This team, the Louisville team, seems to have settled down on both sides of the ball. They've stopped the Virginia offense. Right now, that offensive line up front for Louisville seems to be making more holes, giving the running backs an opportunity. They're also taking more time off the clock. Bobby Petrino, a very intelligent coach, no matter what he wants to do with it, throw it or run it, he's still going to start milking the clock at this point in the game. Tried to bring some pressure from a long way back, but uh, wasn't going to get there before Travion Samuel had the ball for Louisville. And about a four-yard gain on first down. Lamar Jackson has that rare ability to be dropping away from the line of scrimmage. He's, his arm is strong enough. His release is accurate enough. He throws very well on the run, backpedaling, finding crossing routes underneath. Louisville sub, so Virginia given the opportunity to sub. And it'll be second down from just inside the 10. Jackson pulls it, makes some room up the middle for himself, but he's down to the three, and a first and goal for the Cards. That was an example, as I would say, I'm not sure that was the right read by him. There were two guys outside. He probably should have given it, but he saw them, took one step that direction, froze them, and made four or five yards up the middle on his own. 14 carries on the day. 63 yards, a four-and-a-half-yard average for Jackson. It's first and goal. They've got the big formation in, and a whistle, and some movement. Ball start, offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, first down. Jerron Christian, the left tackle, flag for the foul. Look at Bobby Petrino, who all he's done at Louisville is win. And score points. Yes. Right now, we had an interesting take, too. We should talk about penalties. And when uh, Virginia had no penalties in the game earlier this year, Coach and I on offense thought, we need to be more aggressive. We, we have to get some penalties because we're not pushing ourselves as hard as we need to from snap to whistle. Coach Petrino, one of the most penalized teams in the nation right now, but I don't think he worries about it as long as they score points. Good ball fake by Jackson. He throws at the feet of the intended receiver. And is headed for Mickey Crum. His second tight end in the ball game and incomplete. Actually, I think that was a good choice by Jackson. He was very well covered. Had that ball been up in the catch zone, I think it would have been intercepted. So they bring a fullback in. Lamar Atkins, 46, senior from Miami. On second and goal, but not at the eight. Timeout, Virginia. Bronco Mendenhall running down the sidelines, Time didn't out. like what he saw, Virginia. made the timeout. Can they hold the cards to three and try and keep themselves in this ball game? Key moment for the Cavaliers. This is ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers. The college football playoff coming December 31st. The first college football playoff committee rankings of the year coming Tuesday. Where will number five Louisville be in those rankings? Today, they've been playing from behind in Charlottesville against Virginia. Can the Cavaliers hold the cards to a field goal and keep it a one possession game here? Or will Lamar Jackson lead the cards into the end zone and try and finally pull away from what's been a very pesky Virginia team today? He's got time. He throws over the top. A Cole Hicatini incomplete, no flags. Third down. They like Hicatini. See him going over the middle here. Makes a nice move to get open. Ball thrown just a little bit high. Could have sheltered it into his body. They like him down there. He's a big target in the red zone. So third down and goal from the eight.
Okay. Pressure, they get the sack. Who else? Micah Kaiser there for the Cavaliers. He's putting on a show today. We talked about he's a leading tackler in the league, but you would know that based on what he does. He's just going to blow through that A-gap up the middle. Let's take a look here. This is right in the face of the quarter. They got a double A-gap blitz here. He's the one that doesn't get picked up. Back tried to slide over and get him, but he eludes him. Puts the pressure on Jackson. First to try for a field goal now. If successful, let's keep it a one-score ball game. Lanton Kuki. Knocks it through. And so the lead is seven for the Cardinals with eight minutes to go in the ball game. Let's take a look at our good hands play of the day brought to you by Allstate. Why not? Lamar Jackson. When the ball's been in his hands for Louisville is when they've been best. He makes a lot of plays. Uh, I can say good hands, good feet. He's made several good throws on the day. Just you want the ball in his hands. He's the athlete you fear the most on the field. Jackson, 22 of 37, throwing for 327, three touchdowns, one interception. He's rushed 15 times for 56 yards, and no touchdowns there. And uh, another day where he is leading his team. But I believe he scored a touchdown on the ground in every game this year. This might be the first game where he's not had a rushing touchdown. It won't matter if they win, but it is one of those stat things that everybody wants to talk about. So, Cavaliers, a win for their defense. Keep it a one-possession game. Their offense got a very stern talking to after they came off the field last time by offensive coordinator Robert and I. We'll see what they do when they come back on the field this time as down to the end zone will be the kickoff by Joe Reed, and they'll start at the 25-yard line. Well, Lamar Jackson, what he has done so far this season. First, he's been the most spectacular player and productive player in college football, in my opinion. He's led his team, rushing, receiving, attitude, determination, seeking of perfection. He pushes himself, and he's, he's also the guy who was voted captain before this year by his team. They recognize that leadership capability in addition to his performance capabilities. Responsible for more points per game than a lot of entire teams. Here's Kirk Ben Kirk going to run. Looking for the marker. He'll reach for it and manage to hang on to the ball. Gets nine of the ten needed before Jair Alexander tripped him up. Kurt Benkett in our meetings with him talked about the fact that he thought there was going to be more quarterback runs in the plan this week. Robert and I didn't say that. He thought, well, we're going to have some, but not maybe as many as uh, Mr. Baker might think. So second down and one. First downs today have been pretty good for UVA. That's one of the things they'd said was a problem coming in. They've done fairly well on that today. A couple times they've been behind the chains, but for the most part, their first down gains have been pretty good. Average 6.9 yards on first down. Uh, check that. Average uh, 4.8 yards on first down through the game. And they'll call a timeout here. Timeout. Virginia. Which may come back Their to hurt them later in the game. 30 second timeout. So uh, take a minute while we are in the timeout to uh, give you our AT&T backstage pass and check with Chris. Now we want to introduce you to someone very special, Dr. John Risher. He has been the UV stats person since ninth, since the 60s at 106 years old. We talked to him about why he still wants to be a part of this. And he says, I just still get so much joy out of being at the football games. He actually played in UVA season opener back in 1931. Mike, <laughs> were, were you coaching oh, against him? Oh, 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 come oh, on you now. knew that was coming. <laughs> oh. Yeah. He is my idol, though. I'll tell you what. He played golf when he was 100 years old. He used to shoot his age. Now he just tries to shoot his weight. That's fun. One of the fascinating characters around Virginia football, Taquan Mizell, does not get anything on second and one. I think the difference in this game, and I think why Robert and I was take, talking to the entire offense, is that the offensive line has lost some of its mojo. They were pushing the Louisville defensive front around, creating opportunities for the running backs to attack the line of scrimmage. Now they're having to defend themselves in their own backfield. So big third down play coming up here for Virginia. 
Again, only down by a touchdown, but if they go three and out with less than seven on the clock, that's not going to help anything. Some uncertainty is how to get lined up. No question who is getting the ball. Question of where he would go and end up. And he ends up with a first down. Mizell moves the sticks for the Hoos. And obviously, Louisville is, is more of a quick strike team. But you have to start thinking about if we score, how many times, how many possessions are we going to have? And I'm talking about Virginia now. So this score, this series becomes very important to try to get some points on the board. Ben Kurt going to swing it out to Mizell, who drops it. That ball was going backwards, I believe, so he had to fall on it, and they will lose the yardage there on first down. You're right. I thought that was a backwards pass also, which is a live ball. He was lucky to fall on it, but that lost yardage puts them in a lot longer situation than they want to be. Loss of six. Second and 16, and that was a big, big moment. One other thing that Virginia's been successful at today is getting back half of that yardage. Yep. Get eight to ten yards to get to a manageable third down situation. Benford with time dumps it off underneath to Mizell. He'll get back out to the 40-yard line, and that's about eight yards. Yeah, he got half of it back or, or more. About third and six or seven now. A spot him at the, just shy of the 41. They need to get to the 48 to move the chains as the clock runs down toward five minutes to go for Bronco Mendenhall and the Cavaliers. I don't know if this is four down territory. Virginia only has one timeout left, which is going to be a factor down the, way, down the stretch. First down. Keon Johnson got wrapped on the sideline by Josh Harvey Clemens. No flag thrown. I'm sorry, short of the first down. He only got a couple. I think this is four down territory based on the clock and the number of timeouts. They'll bring the heavy package in. I don't think they're going to run this, though. I think they'll have a, a RPO for the quarterback. Run pass option on the edge. Sometimes it's fake inside. Off the hands. Flag is out. How many people were on the field? Louisville timeout before the play. Prior to the snap, timeout was called by Louisville. The first timeout of the half. You know, I'm not sure Louisville should have had to call a timeout because Virginia substituted. Usually they stop. Yeah. So. They didn't uh, stand over the ball and hold it until Louisville finished subbing with that play clock running down. The momentary chaos, the fourth down, go for it call by Bronco Mendenhall, the substitution, players running on and off, the timeout by Bobby Petrino in Louisville, and now we redo. Fourth down and short for the Cavaliers. This is actually advantage Virginia because Louisville had to declare and put their defense out on the field. They didn't know what substitution group was going to come out for Virginia. Benford throws, was it caught? Yes! Donnie Dowling. First down, Virginia. Almost like a one-man route over there. It truly wasn't, but they Max protected. Did a nice job of just isolating him one-on-one. -on -one. He runs the inside route. You can see the footwork of Bankert. Ball thrown inside. Sort of a comeback route. Short, but just enough. Past the sticks. They don't whistle it down to review it. Mizell gets away from one. Fights his way forward. He was trapped in the backfield. That was going to be a three or four yard loss. But I think we can fairly say or safely say that the whole world now is four down territory for Virginia, at least certainly on this drive. to a wide-open receiver, Keon 
And check that. That's not Johnson. That's Andre Lavroni. Tries to come back inside. And they'll move the sticks and another Cavalier first down. Found the guy in off coverage. That was a pretty easy throw and catch. They'd like to find that every single down. Yes, they would. So down to the 37-yard line. Three minutes to go. Trailing by a touchdown. Little is staying in their two-deep shell and content to play coverage at this point. As I say that, here they come. Ben Kurtz going to go for it. Johnson couldn't bring it in. Check that. That was Lavroni again. Zykesis Cannon there for Louisville. Should have tried to go up right here. Time it pretty well. Got his hands on it. There may be maybe some question about pass interference. I'm not sure he's playing the ball. Official was right there and didn't call it. So second down and 10. Behind the chains now. Got to find a way to catch up. Mizell will come near side for a few. And it'll bring up third down and long. Another big moment and most likely in four down territory here. Uh, without question, actually, for Virginia. Because a field goal doesn't help them. Yeah, I, I think with this time in the game, 2.30 and counting, only one timeout, I think they've got to go for the touchdown. Pressure coming. Benford throws downfield, and it's just a little too far out of bounds for Keon Johnson to catch up with its fourth down and long. Had two guys open down the field, actually fairly wide open, but he could not get his body. He was moving too much too much velocity to the sideline to get that ball thrown back across his body. Yeah, if he slowed down, he was going to get pasted. Yeah. Because he was being chased hard by some big bodies. No, good pressure by Louisville. That was just a four-man pass for us, but they were able with some stunts and line games up front to free one of those big guys to get in the face of the quarterback. Fourth down. It's got Johnson inside the five-yard line. First down, Virginia. He's their most consistent target. When in doubt, throw the ball to him. Nice route, nice throw, nice execution. So Benkert delivers to Keon Johnson on fourth down and long. Now the ball inside the five-yard line. And the play clock is at zero. There is also a Louisville player down, Josh Harvey Clemens. And the officials talking to try and sort this out. Let's hear from the referee right in a minute. In a minute. Fairly big play in the game. Here's a throw right down the middle. Attack the two deep look over the underneath cover guy. Great job. Great execution. Perfect timing on the throw. Game clock to two minutes and nine seconds. The game clock 209 and the play clock at 40 seconds. Both will start on my signal. All right, so there's the timing situation. And again, uh, Harvey Clemens down for Louisville at the four-yard line and being attended to by the Cardinal medical staff there. Ken Johnson also doing a nice job because he had controlled that ball through contact with the ground. He got hit a couple times by the covering defender and then the safety coming over to help and try to break it up. So Kurt Van Kurt who received a less than flattering response from some of the fans after the interception he threw earlier, now throws a key fourth down completion to keep the drive alive. Virginia with a first and goal. Two minutes to go in the ball game from the four yard line to try and tie up number five Louisville. My question, if you score, do you go for two or just kick it? Well, you're the coach, what would you do? Well, <laughs> at home, the general thought is you, you're okay to go to overtime. On the road, you don't want to go to overtime. I'm not sure if I'm playing the number five team in the nation, if I want to trade opportunities from the 25-yard line. If I feel I've got a play that I like and believe in, I'd go for it. Interesting. They've gone for it four times this year on two. They've only converted one. That might affect my judgment. All right, so again, the triple back set. For Virginia from the four. Bedford pulls it, throws it. Donnie Darling, touchdown, Cavaliers. The 
Coaches on the sideline are signaling two points. We'll see if that stands. Donnie Dowling, the junior from Richmond, into the end zone. It's a one-point game with a minute 57 to go. Bronco Mendenhall right away, signaling a two-point conversion try was coming. They'll try to take the lead and put it on their defense to stop Louisville. Bronco Riverboat Gambler Mendenhall. Here we go. Love this. And timeout being signaled to reset the play clock. And now we'll wind it up and go again. Two-point try coming. Bunker throws. It's good. Albert Reed. Virginia leads by one. receiver on the initial touchdown great move inside really just gets the DB fooled and then watch it coming out of the backfield here 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 it is from that edge you see it little play fake inside held the underneath coverage allowed the one-on-one -on -one throw and now the try as they instantly said they were going for two and watch here a two-point conversion, a little typical rub, what we call the rub route. There's the rub right there, allowing this receiver to get outside clean. Not blocking, not picking anybody, just rubbing them off. Allowing the back coming out of the backfield to get a free release. Nice throw and catch. Longest drive of the game for Virginia. And the penalty on the try was on Louisville, an unsportsmanlike penalty. So Virginia will kick off from midfield. I would try to pooch kick this and have them catch it inside the 20 yard line. I don't want to kick it through the end zone. I think we could have got him down inside, but you risk the return. All right, now it's on the Virginia defense and certainly the Louisville offense. But if there's a team that can score and score quickly, it's Louisville. So Lamar Jackson will lead the Cardinals onto the field, needing 75 yards in a minute 57. They have two timeouts as Virginia tries to pull the massive upset on the Louisville Cardinals, but a lot of football left to go in a minute 57. And Louisville has two timeouts. Jackson's got some space. Tripped and barely tripped up by Juan Thornhill, who got a foot on him, but not before Jackson is a long way downfield. An injured Virginia player down back at the 18-yard line. That's Andrew Brown, the junior defensive uh, end for the Cavaliers, and the game stopped for the injury timeout with a minute 48 to go. The scary part is Lamar Jackson makes it look easy sometimes. You're playing pass and trying to stay, keep the top on the coverage, cover man to man. Once he sees this, he gets a chance to break out. This is the scariest thing for defensive coordinators, every defensive player on the field, because I'm not sure he really got tackled. He might have just lost his balance. Well, either way, uh, Jackson down at the 43 yard line and a big chunk of yardage not a lot of time taken off the clock and uh, again an opportunity for the Virginia defense to try and seal the win and a big upset but an opportunity for Jackson the one thing I, if, if it's me 
I'm looking at the way that Virginia rushed that play, and I'm thinking, hey, the guys got to remember their assignments and not get too excited at the moment. Well, it's an effort thing. It's, con it's continuing to rush the quarterback, but the reality is you have to make sure you contain him because the most dangerous weapon on the field may not be his arm, it may be his legs. Alan Bestwick, College Football Hall of Famer, Coach Mike Bellotti. When you look at this game for Bronco Mendenhall, Mendenhall, his first year here at Virginia, trying to build a culture, build a program, a chance at a signature win is hanging right there. Well, it's hanging for this entire team. I think he and his coaches want these young men, this group of guys, to enjoy, to have an idea what success is. Yeah. Winning today would be huge success. They've got to fight to the end, though, and obviously their pass rush, their contain of Lamar Jackson, and their ability to run with the talented wide receiver for Louisville are going to be tested right now. And for Louisville, you're on the road. You're against the team you're supposed to beat and beat by a bunch. Were you ready to play the game? You're a little sluggish early, but now a chance to show, hey, we are one of the best teams in the country right here and we've dropped probably more passes today than I've seen him drop all year and I'm not sure of that but obviously is that in the back of their mind what an underneath Brandon Radcliffe will be out near midfield clock running at a minute and a half to go one of the other things you have to do as Virginia is still defend the run. You have to cancel the run first before you attack the quarterback or attack the uh, in a pass rush mode. Virginia all game long, their philosophy's been, we'll give up seven, we'll give up eight. We don't want to give up 70 and 80. Ball batted down, incomplete. Is that Juwan Moy, 95, they've got a hand on it possibly, or was it Mark Hall, 59? Lamar Jackson has a very quick release, but occasionally he's sort of sidearm. He'll drop that elbow a little bit, which allows him, even though he's 6'3", it's, he's not throwing from as high a platform. Third down. Incomplete. Intended for Jeremy Smith, and it's fourth down. And we knew this was four down territory, but this is an interesting situation. Lamar Jackson is going to be challenged. I think they're going to want him to have to throw from the pocket. Incumbent on that defensive front seven in Virginia to contain him. Make him throw from the pocket. Fourth and three. Do they convert and have a chance to win, or is it Virginia's ball game? First down, Louisville. Cole Hickertini with the clutch reception under pressure. The guy they love in those situations, big target. They trust him. He's got great hands. That's right where Lamar Jackson went. Minute to go. They're at the 45. Jackson's going to run. Wrestled down, but not after he gains nine yards. Down to 42 seconds and counting. He took a hit right there. I'll tell you what, Micah Kaiser had an exclamation point at the end of that play. But I'll tell you, Lamar Jackson, there's never been a question about his toughness or his competitiveness. They don't have unlimited time here. They're taking a lot. He'll have the first down. Stop the clock briefly at the 29-yard line with 18 seconds to go. Timeout. Louisville. Louisville will take Their the timeout time here. 30-second timeout. Let's, let's take a look at that fourth down play very quickly just to show you. Here's Lamar Jackson getting the snap. Here his eyes looking. That ball's oh. thrown right through. Oh, my gosh. That's the game of inches. Those, that ball could have been blocked by two different people, but instead it's a completion for the fourth down conversion. Yeah, that ball got knocked out from Hickertini afterwards, but... Now remember, a field goal wins this game, too. Yes. So the reality is that uh, the Virginia defense has to be aware of that. Does the kicker, Cricky, that has been erratic by all means in terms of Coach Petrino's own description, are you going to put the game in his hands? You might have to. 
The season long is 39 from the 29. Jackson going for the end zone. Touchdown! Jalen Smith with the touchdown reception. Is that the first time we've called his name today? This is actually very well covered. This is just a tremendous throw and catch. And Jalen Smith, 6'4", uses that height advantage okay. to go up and high point the ball. The final time out of the half. My goodness. This is a full one-minute team timeout. Yeah, he took a couple steps. He didn't go to the ground. The question if he... Uh, maintain control it's interesting because the ball is out he takes two steps that's a football play he does let the ball go but he's not in contact with the ground so I don't think there's any question about whether that's a touchdown or not wow under pressure behind clock ticking running down on the road I don't know if that's a Heisman moment because I'm not sure the game so far has been Heisman quality for Lamar Jackson but certainly the timing uh, and in the mind of the players and coaches on that other side of the field it was a, a perfect throw a 29 yard touchdown reception for Jalen Smith from Lamar Jackson capping a 75 yard drive that took a minute 44 including that fourth down conversion they'll go for two here to get it back to a seven point lead And easily completed to Jalen Smith, who got lost behind the defense. So 13 seconds to go. And in the story of Louisville trying to find a way into the college football playoff, there may be no play on a positive side bigger this season than this one. No, this one play has kept their hopes alive. A lot of hand fighting going on, but Jalen Smith just going up, getting that ball. Fighting off the defender, and this is a perfectly thrown pass. Look at the height here. A little bit of push off, got away with that, but both of them are hand fighting. One more time. See the release, air on the ball, allows him to run underneath it, and then controlling the ball, couple steps, football play in the end zone. Ball comes out late once he's already taken two or three steps. So Jalen Smith, the six foot four sophomore from Pascagoula, Mississippi, gets the crucial touchdown. And Coach the, says he's going to be fun to watch in the next couple years. Well, he had a lot of fun watching him right there. <laughs> and the two-point conversion, too. Yep. So now, 13 seconds. And you never know. No, you never know. I'll tell you what. In football fun. In I, college football fun. I had a game last year that was, um, that was won on the last play with two seconds left when a kickoff was lateraled several times. So seven seconds to go, and Virginia will have to bring the offense onto the field and start with 69 yards to cover. Virginia does have one timeout. They could conceivably throw a ball down somewhere 8 to 10, 12 yards, step out of bounds, and have another play with a timeout. So uh, be interesting to see. Louisville has no timeout, so they can't set up a defense or take a look or call a timeout to prep their defense. What do you do? Try and get a, a 20, 25 of it here? I, I think it just depends on how long you can hold the ball and throw it down the field. Then the guy's got to get out of bounds or get down so you can call your timeout. Four-man rush for the Cardinals. And still pressure on Denker. You can't take the sack. Ball game over. Louisville will win. Well, for Bronco Mendenhall's team, they fought hard against the number five team in the country all day long. They came up short. For Bobby Petrino's team, they're going to be happy to get out of Charlottesville with a hard fought win, Chris. Yeah, Coach, given today wasn't your best offensive performance from your guys, what did it take to pull this one out? Yeah, it took all day long. You know, it was great to have that two minute drive and go down and score. Uh, we made it way too close, but 
I thought our offense at the end had great poise and a perfect throw and catch to win the game. What was the difference in the second half? Uh, we had a little bit more focus and, and a little more energy. You know, the first half, we just weren't competing as hard as we normally do. You talk about the poise. There was a point after Lamar Jackson's interception. He came over. He said, that's on me. Goes out and is able to do that game-winning touchdown pass. What does it say about his demeanor and his ability to lead this team? Yeah, everyone on our team has great confidence in him. He's the ultimate competitor, and he just regrouped and came out and found a way to win the game. I appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you very much. So Bobby Petrino's Cardinals go to 7-1 and one on the year, 5-1 and one in conference play, and continue to try and pursue a way to be uh, in that fo college football playoff. Lamar Jackson is with Chris. Lamar Jackson, walk me through that final play. Um, you know, uh, Coach caught a tremendous play with one-on-one coverage outside, and I knew we had the best matchup, so just went win and got the victory. What did you say to your team in the second half to change this thing around? It's our game. You know, this our house. We're trying we try to turn every environment to our house. You know, they had a pretty good crowd, you know, pretty good defense. So who wasn't focused, but our team bung it out, came out the victory. There was a moment there on that final drive that this place was rocking. What was going through your mind at that point? Get the first down. I wasn't worried about the noise. You know, you got to stay focused at a time like that. And that's what we did. You know, got the first down, able to move our drive, to our drive. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Game-winning drive led by the Heisman Trophy favorite, Lamar Jackson. Bobby Petrino's Cardinals will go home with a hard-fought win from Virginia in Charlottesville. 29-yard touchdown pass to Jalen Smith. Decided it with time running out. And despite Virginia's best efforts, it's Louisville who goes home a winner. Final score, 32-25. Cardinals with the win. After this message and a word from your ABC station, the studio catches you up on everything in college football in this early Saturday afternoon. So long from Charlottesville.